What it do, baby? This is episode number 17. And first and foremost, I owe my buddies an apology because they came in here and we recorded this episode. I want to say on September 15th, and it's now October 23rd at 1 a.m. And I have just summoned the courage to edit the podcast and do all the things that I need to do to, you know, produce it and I get it up on YouTube and whatever. But uh, when I say summon the courage, it sounds so much more dramatic than it is. It's not that big of a deal. But, you know, we had a great time recording the podcast. And afterwards, I kind of thought, man, here and there, like, oh, I shouldn't have said that, like. That, that was a little insensitive, you know, that may have been irresponsible, this and that, because I had my buddies in here because I wanted to have a conversation that focused mainly on this endeavor that, they, that they're that they on. You know, they've partnered, um, so to speak, in creating this music media company that's focused on genres uh, related to, uh, you know, EDM and house music and the like. But uh, so I wanted to talk to them about that, uh, you know, in a natural, uh, casual conversation setting, right? Which is basically how my podcast has worked thus far. But uh, we ended up, you know, bullshitting about various topics. And and afterwards, I thought, man, you know, like I just mentioned, you know, I shouldn't have said this and that and whatever. And... Um, so although I do not like the idea of censoring anything out of my podcast, I think there is probably um, certain times where that's necessary. Um, just because, you know, like I, I want to have fun, casual conversations, but I also want to be thoughtful and respectful. And, and I, you know, it sucks because like it's, I realize in this uh, casual fun setting it's easy to veer off the path of um uh of being conscious and aware of the fact that this podcast is publicly available and it's super easy to just you know say some things that need to be not public i guess um so anyways i had to, i had to cut some shit out of the episode and and also Again, just bear with me as I go on this excuse-ridden rant, but man, it's like it's super fun to do the podcast. And to be honest, I do get a kick out of uh, going back and skimming through stuff. But it also is so cringy to have to watch yourself speak or misspeak, and, and to listen to yourself talk and all. It's just oh, as much as I enjoy doing this doing this whole thing that's that's a tough part and i need to learn to uh let go of my ego and you know just accept the fact that it is what it is and um hopefully i become more well spoken as i continue along this path because uh sometimes you just like man i can't i i can't bear to listen to myself listen to myself speak or watch myself it's uh <laughs> But whatever, man. This is not about me. This is we had a we had a fun time, and um, I I love and I appreciate my friends very much, and and uh, I hope they know that I I really appreciate them and respect their time, and uh, I really I apologize for taking so long to produce this episode. Um, they're great guests, they're great guys, and um. And yeah, so we might as well just we might as well just get right into it. So, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, this is episode number seventeen with the big homie Adam Cobian and one of my main mangs, Hector Hernandez. What up, mangs? What's good? Is your are your headphones working? Yeah. Can you tell? I think so, yeah. yeah. How do you turn it up? Turn it up? Yeah. DJ, turn it up. Like that? Yep. Testing, testing. Does it work? It works. I actually haven't tried all these lines out yet. Actually, or I haven't tried the third one out yet because I haven't had to use that line yet. I haven't had two people at once. 
this is your first time doing two guests yeah <laughs> yeah um what was i gonna say oh yeah do you make sure the you know just make sure the mic's like straight up on your on your mouth yeah sick dude do you guys take cbd like ever uh i just got some the other day yeah yeah like a tincture yeah it was like a thousand milligram one um i've never bought any i just kind of take some here and there Uh uh-huh you don't like supplement with it like for what like for what purpose Mm. people claim that there's a lot of purposes like Like medicinal yeah 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 medicinal purposes are there other purposes uh, what like anxiety and stuff or what, yeah. like, what do you I mean? I mean that kind of all falls under the umbrella of like medicinal, right? Sure. Um, I, don't I don't know. know. I've heard people say like it cures cancer and shit, but <laughs> I think I, okay, I think clinical studies have proven that it helps with um, dealing with chemotherapy. Dealing like, with it or like yeah, the, actual, the side effects of chemotherapy. You know, it it also it like kills or it reduces like cancer cells. That's that's the part that I had heard because obviously yeah, like we that's like all of it the whole the whole plant in general not just kind of annoying. shit. Let me let me check on the camera real quick. Really? Yeah, because like weed in general, like people kind of like what you said. Like if somebody's like if somebody has like terminal cancer, yeah. then they'll like smoke some weed, you know, like just to chill them out, get their mind off of things. But I've heard like actually like people that have cancer, uh-huh. they'll take like actual CBD oil like that in that form without smoking it and it's supposed to like you know take away some of that bad stuff at like, least in theory that's what yeah, they want you to think you're know. not a doctor so <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you i don't take cbd so i don't know i i don't know why but like i would i would have assumed that you guys were like connoisseurs of cbd because of your weed smoking <laughs> nah cbd's just uh, like everyone's hopping on it right now and it's just too there's too many variables like it's it, is it hemp derived is it like full spectrum everything so it's kind of just like a if you really find your way into like either selling it or like i don't know i just don't really care for it too much would you say there's almost two different crowds like the cbd crowd and then like the regular smoking crowd yeah yeah of course well i mean this is like technically federally legal now cbd yeah federally what federally legal yeah i know that like the what the farm act or something like that um it's passed like last september or something yeah like that. something like that but they're selling it everywhere now but yeah, that's but, like yeah, we sell it at 24 now exactly yeah, and that's, that's crazy thing, like, what the fuck? that i don't think that has any actual like uh health benefits i heard there's a lot one. of like fake ones or just because like, that one's like hemp derived this this one's probably full spectrum which means it's probably derived from like the actual plant itself supposed to be yeah that's another thing so too. it's actually like getting the right chemicals or whatever like i don't know how the details of this works out but like if it's not federally if growing marijuana for purposes other than extracting cbd is not federally legal then does the fda not go and like certify the process that they're using to like make sure that it really is the product they say it is because I noticed there's no labels on here that says, like, FDA approved. No, definitely. Like, no chance. It's such a gray area. So, like, I, you're kind of taking a chance by, unless you have, like, I'm sure they sell testing strips or something. Or if you know a chemist. Well, it's because the, the one that's the that you see at 7-Eleven and stuff is hemp-derived, which it's pr- it probably has been tested, but it's not going to come back with, like, any psychoactive effects. Whereas, like, if you probably tested a full-spectrum one, it's not going to test the same as... Probably not, huh? I bet you if you drink this whole bottle, you get fucked up. Probably. Right? Because I think it has to have like less than 3% THC mm. per milligram or something to be considered full spectrum CBD. So it still has a little bit in it, but mm-hmm. I don't know. Do you remember the first time you got high? Yeah, I was with. Uh... <laughs> you want to specify on what it was, too? <laughs> uh, no, I was just smoking weed. Uh, and uh, high school. Do you remember it clearly, or is it something you have to like. Like no, yeah, it was first time I was with uh, with Johnny, Johnny, Johnny Reyes. Damn, and <laughs> fucking yeah, we were just at his house, smoked it. The first time I didn't really feel it. Mm-hmm. I was just kind of like, all right, whatever. Second time, well, how old are you? What grade is this? 
I think sophomore year. Damn, <laughs> sophomore year. Yeah. I guess that's I guess that's normal. Yeah, and sophomore year, I think a couple times, like, like a party what? or whatever. Is this okay? First time though, is this like, what'd you smoke? Uh, just out of a piece, like just weed, out of a out of a bowl. Okay, there's like a couple things you could smoke, like a couple styles, right? Like, what are the most common ones? Like a bong, blunts, joints. Blunt. What's the difference between a blunt and a joint? Blunts, tobacco, joint is like paper. Oh. Like natural, oh, like hemp paper sometimes. Got it. Tobacco gets you high vapes. too, right? Oh, fuck Ow. yeah, the vapes. <laughs> dude, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, dude, a lot of people have been like dying. Dude, vaping. Uh, vaping. The, <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to it's kind of sketchy, dude. <laughs> Do you worry about that at all? Nah, you don't give a fuck? I mean, my shit's not, my shit's not fake. What does that mean, dude? I don't well, know. Like, people are dying from like the fake shit that's coming in from like China and shit. Like, oh really? Is that the yeah, counter, yeah, the counter, one on the street? Yeah, fake ones. They put like other stuff in it. They were putting like vitamin E or whatever, like synthetic compounds and stuff. Some, Coconut oil. Yeah, just something about like what that, like the added Christ. stuff is is just not good for you. You know, like it's already you're already smoking oil, but <laughs> dude, the other day throwing other stuff in there. I went to uh, Glendale. Went to like the Glendale Galleria, right? It was like on a Tuesday. I think it was still summertime. So there was like kids not in school, but like out riding bikes and shit. And I'm like at an intersection about to make a right hand turn. And Brittany's like looking around and stuff. And she's like, oh shit, look at that kid. Dude, it was like a 12 year old kid straight smoking as a vape. And I was like, God, dude, that dude, can't be good for you. They're the like Joe little Pons. kids. Joe Pods terrible. took over. I think they're worse than Pods. Little fucking kids. And, like, also I've seen, like, videos on Twitter and stuff of people, like, in class, like, hitting vapes and stuff. Imagine people smoking weed in class. That's pro- I probably would have been doing that. It's probably the best and worst part, just the convenience of them, you know? God, they're so small, too. They, like... Hit it. Jesus Christ. Right, I'm good, man. <laughs> I'm all right. <laughs> Thanks, though. What the fuck? It's just, like, a little bit of oil in here. It was a battery. Pop it open. Yeah. Take the I don't top off. Break it. Go for it. Oh yeah. Shit. How much does that cost? The battery, like twenty bucks. It's like fifty bucks. What about the oil? The oil, like fifty bucks. Oh, like fifty bucks. The battery, like twenty. How long does that last you? Mmm. Shit. Recently, like a couple days. Dude, a couple days. Yeah. 50 bucks for a couple well, no, days? I, mean, I, I get them either at wholesale or through like a rep that we have because they sponsor us. Oh, for real? Yeah. Oh, damn. That's cool. Dude, that's how many cool. how many hundreds of dollars you spend on weed every year? Oh, dude. <laughs> what thousands, the fuck? Tens of thousands. What's probably. your preferred smoking method? Uh, or or what's your preferred method blunts, of delivery? Before it was blunts. Now the convenience of like a vape is mm. kind of chill. Why it's clean, it's easy, or what? Accessible. It's just it's just convenient. Can you can you get into anywhere with that? Pretty much. Like where's you, you have to sneak it in a little bit. Where's an example of a spot that you can't take it into? Hard summer. Mm. Wait, I fit this on a fucking airplane. <laughs> you put it on an airplane? I fit this on an airplane. Dude, I, I don't fit think this on the fucking <laughs> on top that. of the fucking Where'd you put it? <laughs> um, what's that like Slide square thing next to the Eiffel Tower? <laughs> What the Arc de Triomphe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hit, I hit it like on there, like just a what, bunch of what do you mean random you plates. Like you can just take it anywhere. Like it's, no, but how'd you take it on the plane? How'd you get past like TSA? Oh, did you just put it in your bag? Oh, they're like, no, it's just like what the fuck. Because what? Like they're gonna stop you from taking your jewel on there? Well, dude, what about the freaking thing? I mean, does like it not have LAX, any oil? Where you can bring weed? Like how much weed can you have at the airport now? Oh, LAX, yeah, yeah. a whole ounce. Mm. So like that's right. Man, like they're not gonna care for that anymore. You know? That's right. That's right. But TSA, TSA is federal. No, federal like I've flown to right Europe. There. I've flown to fucking fuck, South dude? America. Yeah. Dude, what if you get locked up abroad, man? You don't care. It's worth it. I I haven't thought. Have about you ever that. seen that show? No, I used to watch. That don't. Show oh, okay. I was gonna say, don't watch that show, watch that show if yeah, you yeah. haven't, because that's a fucked up show, dude. No, that show's people cool. get like thrown in little dungeons in like China and stuff. Yeah, no. You get fun. caught with like poppy seeds in Chile, and they freaking. That show sketch. Fuck that. That show like legit made me afraid to travel for a little bit. Nah, you just can't be getting yourself into shit. But nah, it definitely is like there is cases of just you leaving your bag unattended and like next thing you know there's fucking 
ounces of fucking coke in your <laughs> shit. <laughs> and you're trying to go through TSA and you just get caught up. Oh my god. Dude, that, when I went to New Zealand, not, not New Zealand, sorry, uh, Costa Rica, um, they had these like really good fruits called a water apple. I don't know if you've ever seen one, but it's like a red pear. And it's not as juicy as a pear, but it's like in between an apple and a pear, right? And uh, they're fucking bomb, but I've never seen one before. And I guess they don't have them here in California or the States maybe because the climate's not optimized for them. But regardless, one of my homies really liked it. And he had like a big fro, and like they are pretty strict about not exporting, like seeds, like fruit seeds and shit between countries. But he just put like the freaking pit, like straight in his hair, and walked through TSA and everything to the scan, oh, all that stuff. I just see, like a little lump on his head, and they're like, "All right, just go." Damn, dude. But yeah, you get in like serious trouble for transporting fruit between uh, or any agriculture between. Uh, countries yeah i know when i was in you could fuck up a whole ecosystem a whole in, industry yeah that yeah. like little animals stuff like that you just bring disease over and just start a like... little like tick <laughs> yeah <laughs> like an i know dude fuck that. a little like rat flea black plague That'd be dope. Oh, shit. what's that one movie uh planet of the apes yeah, what about it? <laughs> I haven't seen it in a long time. I haven't when seen it recently like, enough to quote it. When they start just like bringing over like disease and you see like the end of the movie, it's like a like a map of like how the disease spreads and it's really just an airplane going from city to city. And uh-huh. then it's like it starts as one little dog, it goes to the next city, boom, it explodes. And then everybody that flies out of that city flies everywhere else in the world and bam, oh. it's worldwide. It's like the movie with Matt Damon, like Contagion or something. Which one's that one? I think it's called Contagion. It's like where his wife works at a fucking, like, I think she works at like the CDC or something, and she gets sick, and then that's like starts the outbreak, and he's like the guy who has to like save the world or something. I don't know. <laughs> this, is, this is like one of those fucking movies where there's an outbreak. <laughs> Have you gotten into de- like deeply into that whole like zombie shit? Uh, like, I feel how, like how real it can be. You know, actually, I'm really interested in like going down that rabbit hole soon because Brittany is going to school next to the CDC and she wants to work there, right? So she's studying public health and a lot of the uh, public health world is like centered around, you know, uh, studying diseases and shit like that. But the uh, beginning of The Walking Dead starts at the CDC. Yeah. Or not the beginning, but like they figure out eventually, like the third season, that's where it comes from and stuff. But yeah, I don't know if I buy zombies, but for sure there are diseases that fuck shit up like uh freaking ebola dude i remember swine flu was big yeah, West yeah. yeah i don't know what the difference between a virus and a disease is but how how sure. big do you think that actually was though more than just like how it was portrayed which one stuff like swine flu and stuff Bro, like that. There, was, there was like thousands of people dying but in like third world countries yeah no like in fucking well i mean like mexico probably too because then it's like, are they dying because they don't have Access, proper treatment? You yeah, know? to proper care. Well, dude, the freaking, the CDC came up with like a cure for Ebola as it was spreading. But that was like a pretty serious public health threat. Um, but yeah, dude, a lot of people die. And I think a big part of it is because they can't get out access to good medical treatment. Like, dude, back in the day, diarrhea would fucking kill a lot of people well the flu dude yeah yeah. if you get the flu you die because you dehydrate from like diarrhea and shit like you're, you're dead yeah like they don't have ivs what are you gonna do like <laughs> yeah True. there was a the guy shows up with like the fucking mask the beak you know like <laughs> you know like the freaking like the they strap the freaking like leather mask to the back and, like, he comes like that <laughs> you know the pictures like they put the herbs in the beak no. <laughs> what the fuck? Oh, wait, that. like a like a mini bong almost? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking yeah. about. Uh, like a gas mask type of thing? Yeah, 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 yeah. Black plague fucking mask. Yeah, fucking mask. This shit. Oh, what the hell? Yeah, you were, dude. That's the doctors? I'm pretty sure I learned this in a class with you, dude. What were you doing? What, yeah, what, yeah, what this is like. I think it was like uh, a history class. Fuck. Yeah, but like this was like during the Black Plague days, dude. The doctors would come and they thought it was like uh, 
they thought the herbs and stuff that they spices and shit they put in that like beak they thought it would like help to like kill any fucking disease so they would go and treat people and like this imagine you're sick and this dude shows up you like for sure know you're dead <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're like yeah, dude, my shit's sure. fucked up i'm done <laughs> this guy comes like could you look any more like the grim reaper i mean god dude damn dude that's crazy like all stitched leather face <laughs> with the goggles <laughs> it's like steampunk shit dude uh what uh like what years was this like what time frame 1500s dude that's a good question i mean people still die from the black plague today but let's see um you're gonna guess 1500s 1300s. oh wow what the Black Death, also known as the Great Plague or the Plague, or less commonly the Black Plague, was one of the most devastating pandemics in human history, resulting in the deaths of an estimated 75 to 200 million people in Eurasia and peaking in Europe from 1347 to 1351. Only four fucking years, dude. Dude, that was probably a quarter of the, the peak, population at the time. Yeah, it was It was like a uh, Nowadays, that a would huge, make a dent. A huge portion of the people in the world it was like the black plague and genghis Khan killed oh actually the spanish flu the spanish flu killed a lot of people everything would kill people back then dude the civil war killed like half america Bro, that's when like people were going to war like all the time for like any old reason religion like gangrene i'm gonna kill you because you're not catholic gangrene. dude Yo, that's really, that's really, like, a weird topic. Like, the violence of religion. Because oh, a lot of mainstream religions had their most violent days in the past. But, you know, if you want to, like, bring up 9-11 or something, that's, like, recent religio or reli I was going to say religiosity, um, extremism, like, it's associated with Islam, right? Which is really weird because it's obviously not the majority of people who are Muslim doing that. I mean, clearly, right? But it's like, it's really weird because even, you like the Spanish Inquisition, right? A lot of people died that weren't Catholic and vice versa. But I don't know. That's, that's a weird topic. I think, it, well, it's, it goes down to like whoever's in power, right? Cause they're the ones making the decisions. So like, yeah. personally, like I'm a, I'm Catholic, but then I saw a lot of stuff like on the Catholic church that I honestly <laughs> just didn't know about like in detail. Uh -huh. Um, and then like after seeing it, I'm just like, Oh my God, like somebody was just calling the shots and it was like, nah, if you're not with it, like you're going to get like your head cut off or something, you know, that's how they would do it back in the day. But it's just like, is there a reason for it? No. Other than just like them not agreeing with it. I think you, I think if you like, cause like my understanding of like Catholicism and like the Catholic church is that it's also like a business empire, right? Well, they have power, you know, they own like a lot of real estate and shit. Yeah. They like don't pay any fucking taxes. Well, that's and, what they would do. Yeah. yeah. And like, so it's not even just like you not agreeing with our ideology. It's like you threaten our business. Yeah. Like our money and culture and everything like that. Well, it's like if you don't agree with our principles, you can't live in our city that's owned by the church. Yeah, you know? that's fucking weird, dude. <laughs> so it's like either you you suck it up and then you follow what they do and you pay them, mm -hmm. or like you fight and like kind of stay hidden, or else you're you're done for. Yeah, I was asking my parents recently, like, how do you guys stay Catholic, considering all of the clear corruption and hypocrisy that's promoted by like the highest levels of the Catholic Church? Like, the really, whole shuffling people around that, like, rape kids and shit, like... I don't really consider myself religious, mm -hmm. but my parents, I I really doubt they know, like, the detail, to be completely honest with you. Wait, what they yeah. say? What my parents say? Yeah. They were kind of like, well, we don't associate with, like, those aspects of the church. They're like, for us, you know, certain parts of the religion provide us with, like, good things, and we appreciate those takeaways, but, like, we obviously clearly don't promote those other things. And I was like, well... I get that, but if, for example, you were sending your kids to an elementary school and they had good teachers, you know, most places have good people and bad people, if you want to look at it that way. But you, you found out, like, some of the teachers were raping kids and the principal knew about it. 
which is like the principal represents the Vatican for the Catholic Church, right? The Vatican clearly knew that many of their priests were molesting kids and they were choosing to shuffle people around and avoid, you know, all these things coming to light. And would, I was like asking my parents, would you keep sending your kids to that school just because you can say to yourself, there's good things for you to take away and you choose not to associate with the bad things? And they're like, oh, when you put it like that, <laughs> like yeah, it's more of a, that's a harder question. philosophical question. Yeah. But yeah, it's something like religion is obviously more meaningful to people than like what elementary school your kids go to. But, but I don't know, dude, because like the Vatican clearly does know about a lot of this shit and they just choose not to do anything about it. Well, it's because like, or maybe it's like a business that's too big. Yeah, exactly. What, what like, can you, you can't do? control what can everybody. One person at the top do like. I don't know. I mean, surely in they could fire of, priests more frequently. Oh, for sure. But then is that going to stop, like, another priest from doing it in the future? Like, it's just a whole... It, it, it's dating back to, like, the beginning of organized religion. So it's not something that's going to probably change. Yeah, for sure. Like, the you bare minimum... You rearrange a whole structure of a religion that, they, that dates back for so long. And, like... That's true. You know? That's why I think... Uh, organized religion in general is like losing its um like appeal like appeal yeah just because it's grasp on society yeah it's just it's not really like applicable i guess do you feel like it's not relevant to your life or do you consider yourself religious uh i don't know i guess i guess like i grew up catholic like i went, had to go to church and everything uh-huh. but as of recently i haven't gone to church so shit I don't know. I've been, been losing less and less of, like, that religious aspect of, like, I don't know. It's just a certain type of, like, thinking associated with that that Makes I'm just, sense. like, not, I don't really fuck with. What's uh, what's your take on it? Because, I mean, we I feel like we kind of had similar upbringings uh-huh. as far as, like, religion. Like, we're all we're all Catholic, right? Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. At least because of our parents. And yeah. then nowadays, it seems like everybody, you know, whether it's because they got away from religion or I, I don't know like you've kind of put it out there that you don't really just seem to follow any type of like programming yeah. in that sense right you just kind of what what would you describe that as no so for sure i grew up catholic and that's basically just because my parents and my family is mostly catholic and um i can't say i ever really liked it as a kid or at least i didn't like church but i guess you kind of embrace the philosoph- the philosophy behind it because that's what you're indoctrinated into right that's like becomes what you know right but uh i I don't know i never really bought all of it and when i studied abroad in new zealand actually i took a philosophy class and i started doing more reading on like theology and i think that separation from my catholic i guess culture or community allowed me to like develop my own ideas and perspectives on religion and then so i came back and i was like i don't fuck with this anymore <laughs> that's basically so it was like i don't fuck with this anymore and also i don't fuck with any religions because why would i yeah like if, if i don't on reason uh i logic or like i th- think yeah, this is kind of a tricky thing to answer because like my personal opinion is like my perspective is logical and that kind of implies that anybody who has the opposite perspective is not as logical or is illogical. Yes and no, because that's where that's where the difference between a religious person and a non-religious person is. The religious person is going to tell you that you're going to go to hell. A logical person mm-hmm. could say, oh, I believe this and I just believe it. They're not going to necessarily care to enforce like all the history and like, you know, you betraying the religion is a bad thing upon you. You know, yeah, that's kind of how I see it. As Wait, the, so as how do you the, the how do you feel difference. about it? Because like I straight up like I'm basically atheist, which means I don't believe in a god, but it doesn't mean I don't think there's a possibility that there's God. Like I think there could be. I think I'm just not compelled to believe in any of them. I think you're just at a certain point. You know. Yeah. You. you like, oh, I think you, I hope you, it's evolving. Yeah. Yeah, like you you understand that maybe you just don't know everything. Like yeah. There's a lot oh, of for stuff, sure. A lot no. of stuff that's really weird that like it's, it's oh, just yeah. inexplainable. But you're not out here trying to make like 
judgment calls on like what you're doing and like whether it's right or wrong same thing with other people yeah i think often the phrase atheism is misunderstood um some people do use it as like a title to attach themselves to an ideology in my perspective it's like you're taking a stance of i don't know but like i'm just saying i don't like i don't believe because partially be, personally what, for me because i don't know uh what's the difference between like atheist and agnostic i think agnostic technically means you think that people can't know okay, whereas can't know, what? can't know if there's a god or not like it's unknowable that but like unknowable therefore they don't have a stance my perspective is i think there's something to be said of likelihood so and you have you have like faith mm, in something not really so you don't so then like no like i have no I don't no no. I don't think honestly. I try to eliminate the word faith from my like ethos. What like in general? I just I don't know what like I don't I don't know what that means. Yeah, that's really. True. Besides, when I have evidence, and then when I have evidence to think something, it's more of I think, not I have faith. To me, faith represents a systematic or a system of thinking that doesn't require evidence, but there's not really anything in my life that I just blindly have faith in. If I have a feeling towards something, it's for a reason. Yeah, I still see faith more as, like, I have a belief in instead of, like... Yeah, because what's the difference between I have a belief in and I have faith in? I I think they're similar. That's why I try not to use the word, because I also try not to say I believe in either. Why? Uh, To me, not all believing is a form of thinking critically but, but like uh, sometimes but okay but what about in the case of like you just run a marathon you don't believe that exercise is gonna help you produce better in that case or i yeah, believe to in myself me, enough to conquer this marathon you know yeah to me it's more of a figure of speech than it's a word i try to like use to describe the way i feel about something so having faith in something is you use it how like, what do you mean? Because you, you said you use it as a... To like, me, it's like a figure of speech. Yeah, to describe It's more something. like a metaphor instead of saying... Because, like, in everyday talking, I don't want to be like... I think it's it's more appropriate to use the word believe because, like, it sounds better and it's nicer. But what I'm really saying when I say the word believe is that I think because of. But I don't think any... I don't think everybody always means i think because of when they use that word because sometimes people believe things with no bearing yeah like somebody could say i believe in ghosts right without any proof but no one can say i critically think that there are ghosts and not have a not have uh that idea be based on false reasoning as i mean as far as i know now i've never seen a critical thinking like compelled or compelling argument for ghosts you know but people can still believe in it so like i don't think it's always appropriate for me to use the word believe but when i do it's in place or it's like a it's a figure of speech that really represents something that i think because i feel like i have evidence for yeah that makes sense i believe versus i think yeah yeah see like you know how like all all squares are rectangles by definition sure because they have four sides right so polygonal four sides is <coughs> technically a rectangle but not all rectangles fit the criteria for uh being a square in fact most of them don't that's why we call them squares right so like you know they, it works both ways not i think that not all forms of belief require critical thinking but there are forms of critical thinking that can be represented as a belief based on evidence i don't know dude yeah do you think about this often like i feel like i think about this too much like (laughs) it doesn't even really matter at the end of the day because like we're gonna die anyways (laughs) i feel like unless you're like in a group or something you can only get so far if you're just bouncing ideas off yourself Mm, that's true like you had dead ends 
unless you have other people's perspectives because like i don't like you said something about like thinking and believing but like in my in my head like that means something completely different you know okay you know what this is a good example of why i try not to use the word believe i think it's very misleading for the reasons i presented right especially when people are talking about something scientific like climate change a lot of presidential candidates and politicians and people in general say you know do you believe in climate change or i don't believe in climate change and like this word belief gets thrown around a lot when in my like perspective nothing about it is a matter of belief you can look at the evidence objectively and think one way or the other and in my opinion there's a there's something to be said of the probability that one is more likely to occur than the other so it's it's like in my opinion it's not do you believe in climate change it's do you accept climate science you know what i mean so i mean I that just kind of goes back to being able to prove something right yeah because if you're able to prove it then you're not really believing in it right yeah you're for using, me personally yeah yeah you're using your own knowledge to kind of gather the facts and okay this is what's in front of me yeah and that's not to say that i don't do that a lot like for sure there's a lot of things that i do that probably have no real evidence or you know without real evidence to back it up like the cbd shit like i haven't really looked into all the benefits and like the hard science and stuff i've seen some case studies and whatnot but like i don't know but i think enough to believe that it probably could work for certain things yeah that's basically it. Your Seahawks won today, huh? By two, man. Yeah. Who'd they play? Steelers. I think Ben Roethlisberger got hurt, though, second quarter. He did, yeah. Yeah. You like football? Like football? Yeah. I don't have a football team. For like, some... are you a fan of the NFL? Or if it, that's, that's what kind of implied, like you, like a team? E, like, like I said, like a team, mm. No. Um, for some reason, I just kind of got into like Reggie Bush. <laughs> what? <laughs> when he was when, no, Dude, when he was Zerxa, like five ten years ago. When, when he was what? playing for USC, and then like I started liking football out of that, and then obviously we didn't have a team here until the Rams. So it's like that having the Rams are cool, but I I don't consider myself a Rams fan. I feel you. you know? I feel you. Like I I I wouldn't buy a football jersey just because I I I feel fake wearing. Mm. I'm not. I'm not a fan. That makes sense. That makes yeah. sense. Yeah, same. Here. You wouldn't do it like. I don't know. Do you wear soccer jerseys at all? Um, like for the swag for the I, culture. If I had yeah, to pick a team, true. I would go with Manchester. If uh-huh. I had to go like with basketball, I'd be the Lakers, and baseball the Dodgers and stuff like that. But yeah, I'd be. Just, I just. I'll just be wearing jerseys like soccer jerseys. Because I'll just well, be wearing soccer jerseys. jerseys too. Like if it's for the player. Like, I don't really feel it. But for football, I would feel kind of weird, like, repping a freaking Odell Beckham Jr. jersey for the Browns just for the... For the clout. Yeah, just for the clout. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. But, like, I wear any soccer jersey. Not give a fuck, really. Yeah, that's true. You think that's from being a soccer player or what? Yeah, I think, like, I feel like I'm a little more in tune with that culture to yeah. be, like, able to... I don't know. or But also, know that kind of, like, pop culture-wise, like, it's acceptable to wear soccer jerseys as like streetwear that's like the modern day like festival outfit it's just like a a raptors jersey a raptors jersey it's harder <laughs> purple damn yeah hey, to make sure this shit's like pull it towards you if you're gonna lean back um okay okay what were we we're talking about football for a second. i just lost my train of thought i was gonna say something i totally fucking forgot Talk yeah what's your jerseys. what do you wear what do you wear to freaking uh like Wait, rave, no, I, don't, I, or... I don't wear that. I'm like, I used to. <laughs> to dude. raves? Yeah, like if you're gonna go to a rave or what do you what did you call it? Festival? Uh or festival or something. Like what's your what's your fit? It it depend it depends. Like if we go to like a club show, I'm probably just wearing like a t shirt. But if you're going to a festival, it's different just because it's it's a longer thing. It's usually during the day, it's outside. Uh-huh. Um so that's kind of like why people wear jerseys, tank tops, stuff like that. Um, but if not, it's just like almost like regular, just like stuff like this. You don't do like up to the elbow with like bracelets and shit, like the beads Every, and everything. I, I had my little face. Okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> you had a face. Yeah. Both arms all the way up. To the Damn. Head like to a toe. bead choker and stuff. Head to toe, dude. <laughs> you want to trade? Headband. <laughs> Damn. What would you wear, Adam? I can't. I, would, I, I can't wear jerseys. I can't picture I wear you jerseys. wearing like beads and stuff. <laughs> no, I would wear jerseys <laughs> and like a bandana. <laughs> Dude, that's kind of it. Kind of sucks because like the freaking like the retro like has made a comeback to like mainstream. But if you had like an OG like freaking Vince Carter Raptors jersey from back in the day, that'd be hard. Mm-hmm. But now it's like so commonplace yeah, yeah, that yeah. it's like it just got it became it cool. gets played out. Yeah. Damn. It literally became like festival culture to wear jerseys and headbands. What? Like almost out of nowhere. Like to the point where it just you, everybody. Like if if they're wearing that, like you know where they're going. Like you, people don't just wear it, you know. Well, it's like a freaking hydration pack or something. Yeah. Yep. Too. Hydration packs. Well, freaking Metro Boomin kind of started that too, but I don't know what caused like the whole festival blow up. Well, Vix did. I think that's partly why people See, started wearing Vicks? it. Yeah. That was Vicks. People put Vicks in them, in, in their what? headbands. You know how people wear them over their face, too? Oh, Vicks? Okay. Like Vicks Vapor Rub? Yeah, so people wear the headbands, like, <laughs> over their head, but then sometimes they'll just wear them over their face. Why? Huh? Why Vicks? It's for other reasons. <laughs> what are the reasons? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it's because, like, usually there's a bunch of dust, and you, like, take that shit, and it clears your, like, nasal passages. For real? Your shit's all clogged up. What? Yeah, it's crazy. Like, it's because it's fucking Vicks, dude. You've never put Vicks, like... Yeah, I have. Like, you have, like, a runny nose? Yeah, but I would never have thought to, like, put that in a headband or well, bandana. Yeah, I don't know, dude. It's just festival culture. People do some crazy shit, yeah. It's like a whole new world, dude. A whole new world? <laughs> what about pashminas? Oh, yeah, are, that's, like, the new thing, dude. Oh, wait. I know what pashminas are. What are they? <sighs> like scarves. Like scarves, essentially. Look it up. But yeah, no bandanas were yeah. like. I don't know. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold capture this. sweat to cover the fucking dust. Cashmere wool, damn Persian. Like if you went to Coachella and didn't have like anything like a bandana or something to, like cover your mouth. Mm-hmm. By the third, by the second or third day, like you're walking out with. You're like picking your nose, it's just all, all like, like dry black blackout. Shit, dude. Yeah, it's, it's ridiculous. Like you're blowing your nose for like three days. Like your chimney sweep. Yeah, <laughs> it's like so you kind of need that shit. Like yeah, like right now that's those are big in the like festival scene. Just because. Damn. Actually, I I know I know I know what you mean now. I didn't think about it at first, but yeah, out there and like dust and stuff. Because I wear a freaking um, one of those like those scarves but it's not a scarf it's yeah. just like the sleeve but it's like good for like you could put it like right under your eyes and shit yeah like if you go paintballing or something yeah one of those exactly i mean it does a lot of like sun protection obviously like covers yeah. your mouth and stuff like that but you could like soak it in ice cold water and put it on like chills mm-hmm. you out and stuff. yeah that's what you do with these and shit like, when it's hot like at a festival soak them in water and just put them over dude okay hector you were saying like that's the scene now right that's like the clothing style now kind of and stuff or or at least was a phase what are the phases that you've experienced both of you that you guys have experienced in your time being fans of like edm um so i started listening to it like either in like middle school or probably like early in high school Wait, are we talking clothing specific or just like in general uh yeah let's talk about clothing Clothing specifically. So, oh, dude, there's two specific dis- distinctions, I say. Okay. In, in, like, clothing? in, like, EDM, like, rave clothing. Don't you think? Well, because back in the day, like, when EDC used to be, like, in LA and stuff like that, it was about, like, the shuffle culture and stuff like that. So people would wear, like, some weird-ass pants. Like, baggy-ass shit? Baggy yeah. Pants. Like, people B-boy? Go, like, like, B-boy baggy people stuff? People would go matching a lot. People would go, like, in, like... The highlighter color type shit. Costumes mm-hmm. was a and thing like, too. The very like, costumes of what type? Party. Just anything. Just like yeah, like I'm gonna Halloween be, Mar- I'm gonna be Mario. Shit. People still should yeah. wear that shit. Mm. But now it's like more so for like uh well actually no yeah, you're right. Now and then it went through that like like for guys it was just like that 
jersey phase and Hawaiian like Hawaiian shirts and now like I don't know now for I mean for guys it's kind of always just been the same I don't know well for but, guys it's it's generally speaking more so like that now but it's just because that's there's there's just more people it's it's more crowds now versus like culture like groups of friends going instead of individuals who personally follow the music yeah it just and now people are just be wilding out like it's just a cultural a cultural gathering instead of Dude, now the type a of gathering shit, like you can see type. at a festival ranges from like someone like half half naked to like someone wearing a fucking morph suit. full on morph suit in like a fur coat like remember the freaking guy in the morph suit at catch one Oh out. yeah, dude. We were, at, we were at the show this past weekend, right? And he wasn't even in a morph suit. He was in like in one of those like uh, like uh, those latex like oh, okay, um, dude, like a gimp like suit, BDSM <laughs> like suits. Yeah, yeah, like the black. Did he have a ones. gag? The... Dude, yeah, no, he just had the he just had his mouth open. No, right? dude, he was like getting. <laughs> yeah, there's some people weird, just like beating the shit. shit out of him. No, nah, because he was like getting <laughs> carried on him leash out. And shit, right? <laughs> and so we're about to leave the show. We're saying like peace out to everybody. Whatever, yada oh, yada. Oh God. And we, like, start seeing, like, a little, like, confrontation going on. And it's, like, this, some, like... Hood guy. He was, like, a foo. He was, like, a foo, you know? We just thought he was, like, causing some problems. Some ass foo. He's all mad at the security. And, like, and we're, like, what's going on? So I was, like, yo, let's just go back in there and see what the deal's about. So I guess the guy in that, like, latex outfit, whatever, fucking licked that guy's, like... <laughs> Dude, no! Cheek, right? <laughs> and yes. so the guy was, like, what the fuck? <laughs> And the guy like dipped out, and this was like some fucking Licked like Mexican, uh, like some Mexican fool. Oh shit! <laughs> and yeah, he got like chased him down the street. He was looking Did he at run him, on all to beat his ass. <laughs> <laughs> you just see him like? No, nah, it was some. You know that shit. video? Of the like, girl that was that was like. That's probably one of the weirder things we've yeah. seen. Dude. Sure, yeah. I mean, no, we've seen that before. Where? Fucking blurb. <laughs> what? No, 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 no. some shit like that it, it, to a yeah, show. Yeah, but like at least so we know who bands. he was, and he wasn't licking people's faces. That's true. But still. oh my god, dude! Because like, no, we, we had seen that guy with, like around the event, and it's weird, but it's just like, all right, like he's just, he's just. Yeah, once you like that. start acting oh, weird, so like you can just like look weird. And, yeah, you like, can be look weird and like do your thing, but once you start like doing shit that it's like <laughs> affecting like an outside circle of people, it's just like get your shit together, bitch. Like what the fuck, you weirdo! Oh my god, I hope the whole scene changes into that, and you guys are like in this industry, but just yeah, I think like it's on the way. Straight freaking like leather suits and like fucking people oh, no, chained that's how up. It is. Look up. Uh, <laughs> you see dudes on like leashes and stuff, like crawling. <laughs> that ain't shit. The real poly. That ain't shit. Like just go on Twitter. You'll just see freaking some like shit. doms and like crazy shit. That, that's how it is. It's like, it's <laughs> like bondage type you can see stuff, that shit. dude. That's no, how, it's not. Are you serious, dude? Yeah. That's that's kind of like a scene right now. Dude, like... it is the scene. What? Yeah, but it's like the certain like it's like the elites, you know. <laughs> you know, you know, like the elites in hip hop. Like what all right, it? so like the, the top artists. The, no, no, no. So no, like, like, so I don't know what you're talking about. The, the elites in like the in like the hip hop scene would be like the people that imitate the artists. Shit, I've never heard that phrase before in my life. I, okay. I just made it up right now. We, oh, okay. Explain that. <laughs> <What the fuck? laughs> okay. So, like, uh, in hip hop, like, there's like a certain dress code, like the like people follow. It's like that that punk, like kind of like rock star look that they have now, right? And then like the clout kids will start wearing that type of stuff. Okay. Then, oh yeah. Okay, yeah. you're saying. And then yeah. in, just in general, yeah. in EDM, like it's this dark scene. It's like yeah, but who are the artists that are like dressing like that? A lot of them, like so men. Al Ross. Oh, people fuck. Like that. I have they're, no they're, idea. they're all like underground people. Oh, it's one underground stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's like, all, like, like if I go to freaking, if I went to Nocturnal. It's like, you know how. Would I see what you're describing? Yes. yes yeah, for sure. Yes and no. Okay, you know how yeah. like in 20, like, I'm not even sure when like X and like Peep came out, but you mm-hmm. know how they started bringing like that rock and roll and that sort of like attire to yeah. like hip hop? Yeah. And like in terms of like how, they, like how, they, how they dressed, right? Yeah. That was kind of like, that's kind of like what's going on now. Well, that's it's been happening in like EDM or like Billy Eilish style. Nah. Well, because the thing is, dude, dubstep is like really related to that type of music. Like if you really think about it, it's just the electronic music version of that music. 
it's like the same thing as playing a guitar you play a guitar riff but it's just like different sounds that don't come from a guitar but the same people that appreciate rock music and metal and all that stuff like the renegade crowd yeah yeah like the fucking like there's a lot of like like not necessarily with... <laughs> like people that b- believe in the devil but like satanic like 666 shit and like some people just like... like the culture of it like literally they uh, like they like black and they like certain gear that comes with it like you know, yeah, cho- and... chokers and you know chokers. fishnets <laughs> oh my god dude <laughs> I just oh, fuck. we need to take you to a rhythm show dude dude please actually I do want to go to one soon I was, uh, yeah, before you showed up, I was, like, watching, like, just old fucking Tomorrowland videos and stuff. I was, like, really into that music, into, like, EDM and stuff more freshman year of college. It, like, helped me study. But I've, like, revisited a lot of that music recently, like, now that I've been running more. Because, like, the tempo of that music is just perfect. Yeah. The beats per minute matches, like, basically my heart rate a lot of the times. It's pretty good, but yeah. How yeah. often do you guys? Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, go for it. I was gonna say, how often do you guys have shows or go to shows? Dude, it just depends. Sometimes. Yeah, wait, <laughs> actually, was what are you guys doing now? For people who don't know, actually, for me too, because I really don't even know how to describe what you guys are doing. All I know is that you guys have like two pretty popular Instagram pages, and you're connecting with artists a lot, and you're like going to shows a lot. But I don't really know like what you guys um, are up to. So, I mean, I think the way, like, the easiest way to break it down would be, at the end of the day, it's a media company. But what is a media company? Anything is media, right? Yeah, it depends what platform, and so any platform is media. something that, like, you kind media of see a lot in the, in the industry is people taking the more traditional approach and, like, we're a record label, we're an event production company, right? Uh-huh. They'll define themselves as that, and then they do that. Um, we kind of went about it the opposite way. So like, it's almost like we got people's attention and then we started because we already had people's attention, just started doing little things here and there mm-hmm. because we already were like, in a sense, we're big enough to do so. What's the company's name? Uh, which one? So there's multiple companies uh, officially or do you want to kind of hop into that one? Um, well, it's like, it's the two brands and then we have like a parent company. It's, it's t- technically run as DSP media. Okay. Don't ask me what that means. Cause it, was, it doesn't have a meaning yet. It's just like some shit we threw together. Okay. But that kind of is like the parent company of the two brands. And we kind of, uh, just use the brands as marketing tactics to build up, I guess the media company as a whole, mm-hmm. but really the brands are acting like their own companies as companies themselves what are the names uh the written project and the house project uh one's like on the house side of edm and then one's on like the base dubstep like rhythm so okay. um but yeah yeah so i mean at the end of the day it's a platform right mm-hmm. um whether that means we help artists out by putting music out or reposting their song because at the end of the day it started off as just the instagrams and then the Instagrams, the way I looked at them, were basically just like modern blogs. So instead mm-hmm. of having a paragraph and a picture of an artwork, it's a video with the actual song. And then like, if you like it, you like it, you know, like that's, that's, that's yeah. what the point of it was. Like, do you like this song? Cool. We're going to share it because we like it. Um, yeah. If you, if you like it, you like it, you know, because you like following stuff like that too, right? Yeah, and like it was also yourself. That's like yourself, something you would enjoy. So yeah. you're basically just sharing things that you enjoy. Yeah, it was also people. weird. Why? So like when you asked that first question about like the clothing, it's because back back in the day, like if you listened to EDM, like it was pretty weird, you know. Uh, Most people just didn't listen to it, didn't really know what it was. Most people still think EDM is like one thing, dude. Mm-hmm. There's like so many subgenres; they're not really recognizable to each other. Like flume. Is completely different from dubstep, and then there's house, and then there's hardcore music. There's mm-hmm. all this stuff, right? Um, so unless you really understand all of that, it's still pretty outcast. Like then there's dubstep, and then there's rhythm. Oh, fuck, <laughs> rhythm is dubstep, but dubstep isn't rhythm. Damn, yeah, you're actually right. There is a whole bunch of freaking subgenres. Yeah, like it's not like 
Actually, maybe I can't make a good comparison because I don't know other music too much. So we're but just I like, imagine there's a lot of subgenres <clears throat> of like jazz. Oh yeah, we probably you know? just don't know about it, you know. So we're know we're like it, bringing yeah. like awareness to all of that, in a sense. Uh, why why two brands? Because the subcultures are very very different. And you feel like it would be an injustice to the two different genres to mix them. Yeah. Um, dubstep culture, like we said, is like more so on the darker side. Mm-hmm. Um. Not that the whole bondage thing ties into everybody that listens to it, but it's mm-hmm. definitely an image that it has. Like chains, rock stars, stuff like that. House music is more chill vibes. You play it at a day party, um, Got things it. of that nature. It's more so like, um, how do I say it? Like day festival, like a beach vibe. Okay. Type of stuff. Like they um, might have some people from that scene, be it like Coachella. It's just, there's just, like, two different energies in, in each genre. It's just, like, if you have, like, some super lyrical rap shit, like, mm-hmm. I don't know, fucking, what's, uh, what's that dude's name? The half black, half white guy? Logic? Logic uh-huh. versus some, like, real street shit, like, um, like Kodak Black, you know? Yeah. They st- they're still rap, right? But you're going to have two different crowds. Oh one's yeah, gonna be rap like, would have been one's a gonna great be, example. One's gonna have like some real street shit, yeah, yeah. and one's gonna have like some talking about my depression, like how being half black, half white problems, right? <laughs> yeah. And like each crowd doesn't want to listen to like, I can guarantee you some like street dude from Florida doesn't want to listen to like Logic talk about that bullshit. Yeah. Whereas like some Logic fan isn't really probably gonna care about the street shit going on in Florida, you know? Whereas That's like, makes sense. you have EDM and like. Dubstep is darker, um, more, uh, it's just darker, and this is like a lighter version of it. I feel uh, like it houses. <clears throat> I feel like everybody kind of comes into it like, oh, EDM's cool. And then, like, from there, everybody just kind of finds their own home, literally. So, like, if you go to a festival, it's the same thing. Like, EDC has, I think, seven or eight stages now, mm-hmm. and they're all usually tailored to one genre. So, like, they have, like, the bass pod, which is, like, dubstep. Um, the main stage is usually, like, people like Calvin Harris, um, mm-hmm. Steve Aoki, people like that. Really like, stuff. Electro House stuff, which is, like, the one that really, really blew up, like, a couple years ago. Um, but then, like, there's, like, smaller ones. Like, there's the house stage. There's <clears throat> the hardcore stage, which is, like, what, what is it? Like, not hardcore. Hard style. Hard style, which is, like, like bam, bass bam, bam, bam. Okay, so there's all these subgenres and um, they all have their different followings and things like that. Like, why do you think one compared to the other became really mainstream? Um, like, do you have any thoughts on that? Mm, house is probably the most broad one. So there's house has also been around the longest. Yeah, um, house is like got popping in the eighties. And like that in America was or in America, oh, because how how I think house got popping real early in like Chicago, and like from there it started spreading in like the mid eighties, and then because I mean real dubstep shit didn't start to like two thousands. Well, yeah, but I think in the two thousands when they both kind of like went mainstream. But they were still pretty underground before. Though. Oh, yeah, we talking like how many. Go, dude, take the freaking mic. Pull it with you if you're going to lean back. Take a. Um, it, could, it, it goes like all the way. You can freaking take it all the way back with you. However, comfortable. Um, but yeah, so like stuff like Electro House, I think, got big because when it started becoming cool to be a DJ, um, uh, people started going to events, and the easiest thing to do at an event <laughs> is jump. Oh wow! So that's literally the type of music that you jump to, is like mm-hmm. electro house. Oh my god! So you think like human physiology? Well, it takes some yeah, played a big role. Amount, the least amount of space. Yeah, because <clears throat> like when we started, oh, when we started like really I looking into the dubstep thing, it dubstep at least a little while ago was more about it still being exclusive, like the culture of dubstep. So, like, if you go to a dubstep show, Mm -hmm. you're not going to have a noob in the middle of the crowd because the middle of the crowd's a mosh pit. And the people in the mosh pit do not give a fuck. 
if you're in the mosh pit standing around, they're going to knock you over. That's not going to happen in a, uh, an Electro House show, you know? Wow. So just, yeah, it's more accessible. Yeah. Yes. To yeah. a greater number of people. For many reasons, yeah. Do you think also by ne- by virtue of it being, for the most part, less dark, that it's more marketable? Less scary. Oh, for sure. Like it's easier to use in commercials or in different types of marketing and to get brand deals and shit like that. Mm-hmm. Because it has like, because when you have like a BDSM freaking image and shit, not to say that that always was the case, but like it becomes maybe more difficult. Maybe not nowadays, but historically more difficult to find advertising suitors. Yeah, you could definitely do a lot more with it. And then like it, like I said, it's it's way more diverse too. So um, Electra House is one thing, but then you have like super chill type of house music that's basically just like the drums. Electra House isn't real like house music like if you have a house head Mm -hmm. they're gonna tell you electro house isn't real like house music you know but it's dubstep there's also dubstep and rhythm and like so there's like sub genres of bass Mm -hmm. but they're they're pretty different house is just like there's a lot you can do with it it's just like a four beat you know what's your personal favorite genre yeah i go through phases like, you can't clearly say, like, oh, I really don't like this. I really prefer this. I feel like or I know like, what I like, but I go through moments where I, like, just absolutely love certain styles. Like, you have an appreciation, for the most part, for the various yeah, like genres. I used to be more into house, um, just, like, electro house stuff. Mm-hmm. And then there was, like, a different, sub- like, bass house started coming around. And then... When dubstep came around, dubstep was cool. And then, like, this flowy type of dubstep started coming around, a.k.a. rhythm. And then now, like, that's basically, like, all I listen to (laughs) for the most part. I still listen to house, but I just enjoy the energy in rhythm, I guess. Got it, got it. What about you, Adam? Uh, Mine for sure rap, hip-hop. Or what are we talking like EDM specifically? Um, I was thinking more like EDM wise, <laughs> just like as the music relates to like the brands that you guys um, are cultivating. I think definitely more on the rhythm side. I think that is probably doing cause because it's like the rhythm stuff's more popping right now. So it's like we kind of have to be more in tune with what's going on with this side of the business as opposed to like the other side. Mm Because right now we're working with, like, artists. We're working about, like, figuring out new music, new people who are going to be, like, we're trying to put on, who we're trying to get put on by type shit. And so, yeah, I'm just listening more to what, like, what I'm doing. Are you ingrained into this, like, culture more or as much as Hector is? Because I know he has, like, a history of... Um, in what sense? And, like, how? Um... I don't know, like Hector, like you freaking like you mix music, right? I I I used you to, have yeah. right, <laughs> yeah. Like this is something that you've been uh, a scene that you've been like a part of. Like you've been a part of this community for a while, right? As a consumer, like of, how much? How long have you been listening to EDM? Of this music since when? Would you say like middle school, probably? Yeah. So see, I started probably listening to EDM. Probably, probably like consistently the start of my freshman year of college. Okay. Just because I was starting to get, when I went away to school freshman year, like you get mm-hmm. a lot more. Like we, we would just have this group in the dorms and like we had a Dropbox file and everyone would send all their shit. So like the type of music you were listening to was just everywhere. And then like, like you said, you just start like niching out into more things. But mm-hmm. I mean, I touched on like, Claude Von Stroke or like the early like people which was like what middle school like that type of shit Steve Aoki like the like the basic ones the radio ones like when we were in high school but yeah really getting into the culture not really till like I really started going to braves and festivals and stuff like that because okay. I always grew up on rap than like hip hop yeah that that's what I was going to say like I, I picture so, you like I know more me. about way more about like the culture of that but knowing rap culture and knowing like what how certain aspects of that 
um, fit into like the crowd or whatever, mm -hmm. it's really easy to take like one music genre to the other and like really realize why people like music, why people like the music, who are who's gonna be the people that like the music. So like understanding that is very easy. So it was like not too tough to understand the EDM culture. I get it. That makes sense. Like your eye for talent. Yeah, I mean, like of... I've, I've always been like. Like when I was little, I was like singing shit with like. So I, I can't. I don't think I know anyone that knows like more lyrics to like to like songs than me or some shit. Cause yeah, that's always been like one of the things I've been good at, just like memorizing lyrics. Like so many fucking rap songs I know, and like, I don't know. So that type of shit, like that part of the music industry. I see. I see. Do you kind of wish that EDM had more lyrics? Oh, for sure. That's why I can't like. I get tired of, like, if I'm at a show, I'm like, all right, well, let's go to a different stage because I'll be at a stage for 20 minutes listening to House and I'll, I'll get tired of it, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's to be able to go to dubstep where it's like, I can go I can go sit at a Travis Scott show for two hours and be singing along to the songs and, like, really getting into it. Whereas, like, EDM, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, I'm like, all right. No. Damn. What about you, Hector? Is that a... Is that something you notice about EDM that you maybe wish was different? Or is that something you appreciate about the music that there's less, if any, lyrics a lot of the time? Honestly, I think for the most part, I don't really like when there's lyrics in EDM songs. Um, especially, especially in dubstep. Why is that? Like, what about that is off-putting to you? I think a lot of the people that do rap on a rhythm song aren't good at rapping oh really to be honest with you um i think that adds to it like if Wait, there was who's rapping on a rhythm song well, well people like riot 10 have rappers and like people that's... Well, i wasn't talking about that i was just talking about rap in general oh no no no. but like e uh, lyrics in edm yeah no I'm, like I don't think lyrics in, any... in dubstep yeah like unless there was like a good rapper or like but is there that many people doing it well, no, but I'm just saying, like... But I when it does happen, you prefer it didn't? Like, I, I can't really tell you about one good song that has rap in it. Or lyrics in general? Mm, lyrics is another thing, because a lot of House has more lyrics. Uh-huh. Um, and I think it goes better with House. Okay. Um, But yeah, I just don't think it's as important, per se, because it is about, like, the beat and, like, the synths and the sounds and all that stuff. It's not so much about the word so a lot of people that criticize edm and stuff will say like the music has no meaning right um especially people who like classic rock or i guess pop not that pop has a very meaningful in the lyrics does but... everybody take a song a certain way or does everybody take a song in their own way so do lyrics mean one thing or do they mean different things to different people because in it the words say, it has a feeling like same like as a rap song has same way as like a fucking house song would have there's like a feeling about it yeah i feel like different songs even there's not any lyrics like have themes right yeah like i can be rapping a, like you can be rapping to a song like trying to shoot somebody up or something you know yeah whereas you can be listening to a house song and then just be grooving you know like trying to have like a good day to start to your day so it's it's very like i think music in general like has a sets a mood in general yeah, I think people who don't understand EDM are highly critical, prefer the lyrics are provided, and then their emotions are guided by the song. Whereas, you know, not to say that I'm like a somebody who listens to EDM a lot, but I get more of the vibe of like EDM is more of like the song paints a, the song presents itself as a canvas that you can like project your own emotions onto. Whereas you don't have somebody telling you how they feel. They're letting you express your own feelings. Yeah. Um, I think they have like a certain energy to them. Um, like rhythm is going to be more like I want to knock somebody's head off. That's kind of like where the whole moshing thing comes from. It's like getting aggression out uh -huh. and stuff like that. Um, it's just more energetic in general. So like that's what I usually tend to work out to. Um house is like like i said it's more chill like you wake up in the morning you're probably not going to listen to dubstep you know at six in the morning there are people that do 
but it's just it doesn't it doesn't weird. fit the mood you know <laughs> it's really weird though how there are moods like that what the fuck yeah. here's a question do you listen to music because you're in a mood or do you listen to music to put you in a certain type of mood shit that's a good question yeah, um yeah. i heard someone i don't know if you asked that but uh, someone asked me that recently do you listen to music to put you in a mood or do you listen to Both. music because you're it, I mean, it, I mean, it differs. But which one do you think you do more? I think Just most like of the time I'm listening on to music based on my existing mood. Because the only thing I can think of where I'm like, yeah. oh, I'm listening to this to get me in a mood is like to go to the gym. Mm-hmm. Other than that, it's like all right, pro- I'm probably listening to this because like, like I, I, I want to feel sick right now. I feel like I usually <laughs> listen to stuff. Uh, yeah, based on my mood mm-hmm. and to maintain the mood Same I have. Mood, yeah. For like, for me working out, like, I don't, want, I don't want to say that music puts me in the mood to work out. Like, I feel like I draw that motivation from other places. But once I'm working out, I like to have the music to sustain my tempo or whatever. It's an extra push. Yeah. Yeah, but if I just like, if I, I notice if I ever try to like, want, if I ever try to force music... It does not like I reject it. Like my body just does not accept it. Yeah, for sure. Force music how like like if you feel like shit and you yeah. like, try to play something that's upbeat to try to get <laughs> you like it makes me more angry. Like, Fuck like it does shit. not Turn make me shit off. Like, <laughs> yeah, like sometimes no, for real like that shit happens to me. Like I when when someone or when I heard that question asked, I started paying attention more. And like it's a good question. Dude, fucking, like, when I'll be hungover in the mornings or if I have to wake up, like, super early to, like, do some stupid shit, like, go to, like, go to work or, like, something extra early. Yeah. I'll, I'll always be playing, like, some, like, before, when I'm taking a shower, some fucking, like, Frank Ocean, something like fucking Billie Eilish, so, like, or something, like, really light. Mm-hmm. Because, like, I don't know. I just feel like if I play something upbeat, I just can't, you know what I mean? It's like, fuck, fuck. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Yeah, I feel that. That makes sense. Damn. Okay, outside of EDM or your your typical like music tastes, what is like a musical guilty pleasure you have? A like some, something you might be pleasure? embarrassed to admit that you like. Probably like those, like Frank Ocean, like, <laughs> Eilish, like Lana Del Rey. That's why I asked the question. <laughs> but like Juice World. But no, I don't find like any. I, I don't think find those any are all good artists. Guilty but... like. Like you don't like listen to Luke Bryan out of nowhere suddenly. No, no. <laughs> okay, I but like had that's a, what I'm had a Point where I would listen to country, but just because like I was trying to figure out if I like country or not, and I was just like, I don't like. Country. <laughs> <laughs> like you know, you didn't, you never did that shit. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Dude, I used to listen to country like a lot more, not a lot, but a lot more than I do now, which is like basically not at all. Before Trump was elected. Now I feel weird listening to country. Like I, I can't hear. say it's I got like weird. a deep dive into it though. Like I don't know. Like, <laughs> like I voted Republican or some shit. Like <laughs> it just makes me feel weird. Not that Gotta there's anything a truck, yeah. wrong with that, but like <laughs> I don't know. Like I don't feel too patriotic these days. You know, like I just. Like <laughs> oh man, you don't have you don't have anything. You don't like listen to Coldplay or something, and it's like totally off cut from EDM, but. Uh, not really, dude. Honestly, I listen to. Come on, dude. House. Do you, have, do you Spotify? Dubstep. I do listen to a bunch of dumb shit. Okay, pull up your Spotify and tell me if there's anything like weird in there. Because that's different. I'm listening to a bunch of scammer music right now. TJ, Occasionally. TJX6, Cash or Quan. Occasionally. Okay, like for the most part, what I listen to right now is like. I don't even know what genre it is. I think it's like psychedelic rock like alternative someone maybe need some a, pop. someone need a baker i listen to like, <laughs> i listen to like flume tame impala chris brown i don't know chapo you know chapo, <laughs> he's, chapo. A, he's, a, he's a rapper oh i'd be listening to a bunch of like spanish music oh spanish okay so that's that's yeah yeah that's kind of different yeah, yeah spanish yeah, music actually, like that's where... to, what are they called like bandas or something yeah banda like mariachi that's actually where i <laughs> yeah. my parents are both really into music and like when oh, i was really? younger too when i was younger i was like really good at like singing with like mariachi and like banda no way. And shit. i swear to god i don't know why but i always had i was always good at that that's like basically mexican country right yeah dude it's very 
very Mexican. But um, yeah, that's kind of like where my mm-hmm. lately I've been listening to like a lot of Nirvana, Stone Temple Pilots, Foo Fighters. Uh, I never Shit got like into that. like that, like alternative stuff. Yeah, Audio Slave. It's kind of like rock. Yeah, alternative rock. Yeah, I never got into that. I had that was like my middle Dude, school Nirvana phase. Is so dope. Oh, fuck. Like Rage. Yeah. Rage Against the Machine. Yeah. yeah. You know who got me into Rage the Machine? Or yeah, Rage. yeah, Luis. <laughs> yeah, Luis, dude. He goes hard on Rage. <laughs> okay, my my like guilty pleasure is for sure Miley Cyrus. Miley Cyrus goes hard. She's got some bangers. She's good though, right? She's got like, some bangers. Katy Perry. Katy Perry. Katy Perry's oh got bangers. God. Lana, oh, dude, dude she, I think Lana's sick, dude. Lana Del Rey. Dude, she's bad. Lana Del Rey. Yeah, I think Billie Eilish is probably one of like... If we're talking like overall, she's probably like one of my top five, ten favorite artists right now. Billy Al- Billy Eilish? Eilish. Yeah. Really? Dude, she's like fifteen, huh? I think she's like seventeen, eighteen. Jesus, dude. That's crazy. Um fuck, I don't believe Heck there. I feel like he listens to some it's like some simping shit. No, I, b- I believe her. Do you? <laughs> I'm trying to We'll, dude, my this dude will be in like, the, like we'll, we'll be picking something. up like in he'll be like in like some random ass I don't even know it'll just be like a random ass time either like real late at night or like really early in the morning mm-hmm. and like we'll be going somewhere and like this just this dude just bumping some rhythm just fucking slapping loud as fuck it's just like <laughs> dude can you please just like quiet this down like my head's throbbing right now like I'm fucking hungover can we play some like fucking rap or something like. So yeah, no, I believe it. I believe it. He just, he just, he just, he just Damn, dude, you're a man of your freaking of your pleasure. I think it comes down to me not really knowing about too much else. Like maybe I don't. Yeah, like I just listen to so much EDM that one. I think I get tired of listening to music, so I just listen to like what's like good that I already like that mm-hmm. isn't EDM. So that's like certain types of hip-hop and stuff like that but other than that i don't usually go too far away you said you got into it when you were like in middle school right uh i like first started here because that's when limewire was around oh man i miss limewire and you could literally look up like techno and like you would download like random ass techno songs but this is like just like straight up techno and then, like from there, like just dead kinda, mouse and stuff. Nah, dude, like worse than that. Like <laughs> worse than that. Dead mouse was like Armin Van Buren. When I started getting oh, yeah. knowledgeable Armin about Buren's. it, yeah. yeah, yeah. At first, it just kind of started as, oh, what the heck is this? It's just like sounds. Damn. Yeah. Why'd you get into it? Like, was it like, why did you like it? Why did it resonate with you at that moment in your life? Dude, I just thought it was cool. Why? Cause different, or what? Uh, I like the energy behind it. Like, um, with music, I think that's what I usually go for. Because in middle school, I was listening to a little bit of hip-hop or rap. Because, um, like, my uncles and stuff. But uh-huh. it wasn't anything too, 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 too much. Like, I wasn't deep into it. I was listening to other types of bands, like Nirvana, like Linkin Park and stuff like that. Um, and I like the energy. But it's also loud music, right? Like literally, it's it's just loud. Yeah, so, you're not gonna play it low. That's right. So we're both probably deaf as shit. Right? Hearing something <laughs> like just random new sounds fr- that were techno at the time. Uh huh. One, it's loud. Two, there's a lot of energy in it. Um, so that was like enough, right? I would play it. I didn't really know what the heck I was listening to. Like I'm like I was like I would literally rip tunes off LimeWire and then say that I like these songs. Why? I don't really know. I just thought they sounded cool, literally, right? But it's not like I'd be learning how to, like, dance to the songs or, like, really know anything else. It was just like, oh, this sounds cool. You were shuffling, dude. Dude, I'm talking, like, in middle school. Dude, you shuffled? Oh, fuck. I'm talking, like... Yeah, you were. What am I talking about? I knew that. (laughs) Shuffling, dude. Shuffling, dude. Damn. Shit, dude. Um, when did I meet you? Did we meet in middle school? I want to say we did. 
Uh, I want to say I met you like in seventh grade. For what? I think I was at my dad uh, one of my dad's like back to school nights or something. I played soccer with like Luis and like a couple of teams who went to Las Palmas. I, I think we met each other at something having to do with like Luis's birthday or something like that. Really? Something like that. And then really? when I came, when I went to South Hills, that's when like we recognized each other or whatever. When did you start going to South Hills? Sophomore year. Sophomore year. Yeah. All right. Right on. Where did you go freshman year? Northview. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Because, I mean, I, I live right there. So I went to Las Palmas and then went to Northview freshman year. Do you like Northview? In what sense? I don't know. Do you like going to school there? <laughs> uh... Like was your freshman year fun? I don't know. It was like, pretty. Yeah. My freshman year. What do you mean? What sense? Question. Yeah. <laughs> it was. It was I guess not. Okay. <laughs> no, no, no. It, it was cool. Um, like you at the time that you started going to South Hills, was it because you didn't like Northview for other reasons, or like did you wish you would have stayed at Northview? Yeah, because your brother went to Northview. My brother oh, yeah, did go right. to Northview. Yeah. Um, did you choose, or did you like? Did you have like a say in that, or? What? It, dude, it was it was like basically all me, but like my parents chose to support it. Hey, what happened? Because <laughs> you believe? Yeah, so it sounds, like, it sounds like a no. It sounds like you didn't like it. <laughs> my, my, parent, my parents chose to support it because it's like a better academic school on paper. Yeah. Um, but as far as like which one I liked better, South Hills is more of a um. It sounds really weird because it's in the same district, but imagine having like a big city school and a small city school. Literally, like that's the difference. Which one's the... So South Hills would be like the big city school. But it's also funny how South Hills has, has more money. You no, know? I just think one school was more white and one school was more Mexican. We all went to South Hills. No, I think... Well, it's because... <laughs> <We're really Mexicans. laughs> here's the thing, here's the thing. Yeah. <laughs> Our year, when we first went into South Hills, they uh, extended the uh, the school border, right? So a lot more Mexicans started coming in when we first started going in there. Because before us... Historically more white. Historically, it was way more white. I remember yeah. that because my uncle coached um, for West Covina, and that was always a bunch of Mexicans. And it was always like it was the Mexicans against the white kids in South, South Hills. Yeah. I mean, this is so more wealthy area more, in general. Yeah, I think that's more of the reason like it would be completely different because like school wise in terms of populations i think they're probably the same right Nah, south hills is bigger oh, wait I thought, really i thought south hills was I thought, smaller that's yeah, why when North you it gave seems that like it has like a bunch of people there <laughs> yeah just a bunch of mexicans <laughs> <laughs> yeah dude yeah that's also, that's also why like in a sense at least on paper south hills is better because they do have more students I didn't know so that. it's like oh. that's also why like oh, west covina has more than south hills really yeah it's not about the size. It's just about like the quality of the education. Damn, that's crazy. How many students does Covina have, or the West Covina have? Probably like ten thousand. Ten thousand? There was, or how much was there? Dude, was I'm pretty total? sure it's nowhere near ten thousand. <laughs> huh? How many? Students I wanted to say at South Hills, I think it's five hundred. I think it's per 2000. graduating class. So we had two thousand. I think it was two thousand for South Hills. I wanted to say West Coast three thousand. Oh, I see. I thought there was two thousand per grade in our school. I don't. Know. But there probably was not. But I think it was five hundred. I so want to say graduate class seven hundred. So it was probably a total of two thousand. Yeah, I think that sounds right to me. So it's probably like three thousand. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> I was close. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> um, were you nervous going to South Hills? You I knew a lot, a lot of people. Of people yeah. Dude. Um, you stayed in the same district all through, like, did you go Barranca or, or Mesa? Mesa? Sarah Vista, the... South Hills? Yeah, so everyone, like, graduated. So you, said you're with... saying, uh, you went to school with everybody. Except freshman year of high school. I went to a different oh, school. Oh, went to Bosco, huh? I went to a different school for a week. For one week? One week. And what happened, what happened there? Dude, all guys. You're just like, fuck <laughs> I thought I could do all guys school and, like, super focus on, like, academics. And, like, because a lot of the graduating class really does go to really good schools. Yeah. Picking, like, MIT and, like, my mom, Harvard and shit. I, mean, we were, I was going to do, a, like, 
my mom had asked me like, "Are you trying to go to Damien?" And I think I literally told her like, "I'm asking gay shit." <laughs> like, <laughs> like, <I'm just laughs> no, that's so gay shit. Come on, dude. <laughs> okay, dude. This was this was like 20, <laughs> 2013. It was still a show. Dude, uh, I actually you I had to go to 2013. <laughs> I still get away with it now, nowadays. That wasn't even 2013. That was 2009, dude. Graduated from eighth grade or like from eighth grade promotion or whatever. Like 2020, 2008. That was 2008. Reason, dude. You could say a bunch of shit. You could say anything. You could say anything. Then, yeah. Oh yeah, you could say anything. Obama wasn't even president yet. Yeah, like, yeah you could say whatever. He just got elected. Yeah. I remember, eighth, <laughs> I remember eighth grade at Sierra Vista had an Obama shirt. Remember the ones Obey made? The Obey ones. I still have it. It's white yeah. with black Obama. Dude, because for me, going from like Holland Crest to Sierra Vista, that was a fuck. That was shitty, dude. <laughs> I remember at the beginning, like to be honest, like not having any friends, and it was just like, dude, what the fuck? Like, dude, I'm in this whole like we used school, to pick on like, Adam so much. <laughs> What? We used to pick on Adam Dude, so I got bullied, much. yeah. We straight up bullied Adam. So for fun. what? <laughs> Just Just for like everything. everything. That he could not do anything right. I forgot Adam for... wasn't like tall back then. No, he wasn't tall. <laughs> you didn't grow until like so junior like year. High school. Huh? No, like after high school. <laughs> yeah, I did. He grew like a foot. Like after we graduated. Dude, we used to tease Adam for everything. Uh, but then that's how he became a friend with us. I remember, dude, it got to the point where, like, at lunchtime, he would try to, like, sneak around to get to the classroom. Dude, these dudes would, like, wait for me at getting out of class just Who to, are, like... Wait, wait, wait. Who are these him dudes? And, him, and, him and fucking... <laughs> basically, him and Joe and, like... Armin. Armin. <laughs> would just, like, fucking maybe like Maybe, like, Devin and Kyle. <laughs> no, not really, like, Devin and Kyle. <laughs> I just remember that him, him and fucking Joe together, just in general, dude. You had this think, guy on you? Were the worst. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. It's because they were bigger than me at that time. Like, they were just, like, big. They, How da- is that possible? Da- Daddy was, like, in the sixth grade with huh? the six-pack. <laughs> well, yeah, his fucking dad had been training him since he was, like, fucking four years old. No, it's, like, weird. I was, like, five, six, which is, like, my height now. I was, like, he five, was six. That, he was, like, this height already. <laughs> I was, like, five, six. I was, like, who I am now, that. but, like, in, in sixth, sixth grade. grade. I was like little, like a little short, stubby kid. Like they would just pick on me and shit. Dude, you're the only kid who's ever gotten picked on for wearing like literally Lakers gear. What? I don't like, that, but. like that's so like innocent and something I could get behind. But like, I forget. Uh, no, Leo. Leo would like. He would always, no matter what you wore, he'd come up with a way to like make fun of it. There's there's an art to that, and Leo's definitely at the top. Oh my god, he's so creative. Yeah, he is. We used to call Adam like Chub Rocks and like stuff Peach like Fuzz. That. Peach Fuzz. And I should, and I would just get mad at that shit. So we'd just be like, "Fuck, we're just easy." <laughs> and then like we had a soccer team in eighth grade. Oh my god, I remember even, that? I don't think I made the team. I didn't make the team. What? No, uh, it wasn't eighth grade. It was yeah, it was seventh and eighth grade. Yeah, we uh-huh. had we played freaking like Trey Wick. Cause I played basketball. I think we played Los Palmos. Dude, there's been like a string of attempted kidnappings. Where? Um, in Muscovina, specifically like near Trey Wick. Dude, um, so I was working at the Walnut Twenty Four for a little bit, mm-hmm. and there was this guy that was working overnight, and he he has a twin, and. Just like a couple weeks ago, apparently it came out that his twin was like in La Puente or something. Dude, he got kidnapped. And then they freaking like found his burnt body like somewhere like Dude. just like dumped. What? And apparently it's because they tried to rob him. I think I heard about this. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck. I don't know if it's burnt like. Burnt body? Fuck. In that situation with like. If you were getting it robbed, what would you do? I think they'd have to burn my shit because, like, I'm not going to let them rob me. What? Dude, are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> what? I don't know. I just thought Dude, I'd give them everything, dude. Okay, let's hear you're walking out of the Oh, trip. my God. It's 11 o'clock. You're walking out at yeah. 11 o'clock at night. If somebody pull, points and a gun at me, I'm probably running because okay, I don't think someone, they're down to someone, shoot. Someone, like, pulls a knife on you and says, Dude, if someone pointed a gun at you, would suck their dick. I swear. <laughs> Bet, bet. I, believe I, it, I, I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. 
You guys are full of shit, dude. You would not. It depends. If I'm like right here and he's like right there, it's different. But if they're in a car and I'm just like, you know. <laughs> if I'm in a car and Let's someone pulls real, a gun on me, dude. like either I'm hitting that motherfucker or Fuck I'm taking no. off. Like you're not going to shoot at me if I'm, if I'm an older I'll be outside. so. That's what I'm saying. Like I I'm going to make them shoot at me. Like they're probably going to miss. No, but if someone if, if someone was away from me in a car pointed a gun at me and I could run, but it would be like kind of iffy, you know, kind of sketchy. Like I have to hop a fence and like they may or may not hit me. Sure, he might be a good shot, but like it's difficult to shoot somebody with a pistol, right? Yeah. I would walk over to them and give them all my shit. What? Okay, dude, I'm not taking a shot. Me. Like fuck that. Yeah, no, that's I, dude. Shit. They could freaking. I I would get in the car with them. They could drive Wait, me I, to an ATM. I'll dude, freaking take gonna, out. I would all try my to run. I'd be like, yeah, I would, I would like try to you. test them and be like, I would shoot. not try to run, dude. Shoot. No, because if okay, if someone came at you with a knife, and like you like, oh, I fucking run. You analyze the situation ass. for half a second, and you realize you could probably take that. You could probably kick his ass. Oh, I for sure would not try to kick somebody's ass. I probably would try to at least. Like if I turned and it was like, I would like, and it was, try to and it was someone that like cost. I think I could probably like fight them and like defend myself without a weapon like i'm probably for sure gonna if you didn't know and then stab him if you didn't know who mighty mouse was and you saw him you know the ufc fighter i don't know um, who that is but i fuck and he's he was like trying to come at me he's like five two and he weighs like 110 pounds but yeah he'd probably it. kill you well fuck it I, I mean i'm probably gonna get killed but like I'd probably... but you would be down you would be like oh, well, yeah, you like, would take your odds yeah I'd, yeah i'd probably just take my odds like, I guess. oh shit because i'm aware of the fact that so many people know how to fight like disregarding the fact that they could have a weapon i would not take my odds probably 99 percent of the time i think i can outrun a good amount of people so i'm taking my chances see that's there. the thing i'm not gonna outrun, outrun somebody yeah, dude. Fuck that shit. I don't... Like, there's a better chance How far of you me to take, run? taking out a 5'2", dude, than me out running a 5'2". Because two, what's man. to say that if you go face-to-face -face with them and give them all your stuff, they're mm -hmm. going to leave you alone? True. Okay, like, the distance... It depends on the distance that I am from this person. But, like... There's for sure, like, a gray area. If someone's, of, like, at your door with a right gun now. and says, all right, give me your shit, right, I'm like, all right, well, you have to be like, all right, well, okay, you, you got me right there. But <laughs> if, let's me. say, someone's <laughs> across the room and my car is right here and they're like, yo, like, give me your shit. Like, if they're turning their back away, I'm trying to run to the car and get in my car and do it. I'm going to have to, I'm probably going to have to, like, test them, see if they're actually going to be down to shoot me. Do you have a push start? I, I, have, I have remote start. Do you? I'm starting my shit from outside the car. Fuck, dude. I, I, have a, I have a push start, and it doesn't always work. I'm like, fuck. Just like pressing it? Dude. Nah, one time I had a nightmare. Oh, my God. Where, for some reason, I don't know, like, what the situation was, but I was, like, getting chased or something. Uh -huh. And, like, the car was, like, stick. And for some reason, in my, in my, like, my dream, I couldn't get the car going because it was stick. Uh -huh. And, like, yeah, I was going to die. Oh, actually, fuck, that reminds me. I was, like, not in one of these situations before, but kind of, like, a, a situation that could have escalated, right? Um, I was out in San Bernardino, and I left work pretty late. It was, like, 7 o'clock, dark as fuck, right? Um, and my car, like, broke down or something. So I was, like, stuck, right? And I had, I think I ended up that night, my mom had freaking drove all the way out there, picked me up, like, Triple A took it down the street to like a mechanic or some shit and then whatever. As I realize like I'm stuck because my car won't start and I'm trying to like get by my phone and like call my mom and figure what the fuck I'm gonna do, some guy comes up to my window, bangs on it hard as shit. It looks, he looks homeless yeah. or something, right? And he, he's yelling at me, you know, like something along the lines of like, yo, give me your shit or something like that, right? And I locked the door, or the door was locked, thank God. Oh, I think he, he tried to open the door. Like, he came up to the door and tried to open it, right? I was like, what the, f right? It freaked me out. And then my car was dead, so I couldn't even go anywhere. So I was like, fuck, I'm just stuck in the car. Like, if he breaks the window right now, I'm going to straight up fight this guy. And then he just left? And, like, I literally looked at him and was like, how the fuck is this going to go down? And then he looked at me and left. I just walked away slowly. Almost seemed like he was trying to break into the car and wasn't quite aware of the fact that I was in it because, like, the lights were off. It was dark, right? You know? 
like he tried to open the door, like just if someone left their door open and take whatever's in there. But then when he saw me, he yelled, and then we made eye contact. It was fucking yeah. But I guess in those situations, you better do something because. So like yeah, like, would you fight a homeless person? Oh, if I had to, yeah. Like if you had saw him coming and like you saw, well, did you see him approaching in that situation? No, it fucking freaked did me out. You? Like I didn't know. Okay, like, let's shit say like you had seen him like walking towards you and like walking towards your car. Mm-hmm. What did you, what did you what would you have just say in there? Actually, yeah, I probably would have too. Yeah. I, like, what the fuck? I mean, it'd be weird to get out and like confront them. I would have tried turning the car on. Oh, I couldn't start the car. I was stuck. <laughs> like literally, it would not start. Like. It wasn't that the battery was dead or anything, but it was like the battery was dead. Hmm. Like, well, I guess I'm just going to fucking... It was like a random parking lot, like, outside, like, a Best Buy or some shit. In San Bernardino? Yeah. But let's just say you had to fight the homeless guy, would you? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, for sure. Yeah. But then if you had a gun or something, that's a different story, because, like, I mean, I guess. What about an old person? An old person? Yeah. Oh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, you know, Let's say, okay, I wouldn't lose sleep okay. about fighting an old person. What if, like, <laughs> I don't know, this situation came up, because, like, I saw some dude, like, went to jail, because, well, I'll explain the situation, but some, like, it was, like, some road rage kind of thing, and, like, the old, some old guy got out of the car mm-hmm. and, like, started banging on the window and started banging on the car and this and that, and this, like, Mexican uh, artist, whatever. Mm-hmm. He was like he got out of out of his car and like he pushed the old man, and like the fucking old man like ended up falling and like hitting his head and whatever. It was like tragic. Ooh. He died, whatever. But oh, like I was asking, like in that situation, like let's say the old man came and like started hitting your car, would you get out and like hit the old man? Oh no, I wouldn't give a fuck about the car. I probably wouldn't hit the guy. I'd fucking like cuss him out or like push him. I probably would push him maybe like to back him off. I wouldn't want to. But touch, I'm sure. I'm sure that guy. I'm sure that no, guy no, like pushed him. <laughs> oh yeah, oh, shit. In a road rage. That sounded right? so bad. I wouldn't want to touch it. I'm just yeah, saying, like, I mean, dude, like syphilis and like shit. We were just talking about AIDS. diseases earlier. Oh like, my god. There's like you know syphilis outbreak right now. I'm like LA freaking measles and shit. I don't know. Yeah, no, but, yeah. Would you? Would I? Would you fight the old man? I personally, I wouldn't. If it was said, bad I, enough, I said I would. Unless if, the old guy swings at me first, I don't think I'm fighting. If I'm, if I'm safe... Like, if the old man came and started car, hitting my car, uh-huh. I'm getting out of the car. Define hitting your car. If he, He's like... This or like... Like, pounding on your hood, like, pounding on your hood, like, come outside, motherfucker. I'm coming, like... You know, like, some road rage shit. I wouldn't. I, I'd I wouldn't. Old. I'd call the cops. I'd, I would try to find like, him. And you have like, way more to if lose. If you fucked me up, that'd be kind of funny, but still... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, either way, it'd be like a win-win. <laughs> I think it I definitely know, depends on the situation, but for the most part, I don't see myself fighting an old man. No. It's like, I have insurance. I don't need this shit. Fuck that old man, dude. <laughs> I just feel bad because, like, now that, like... Dude, they probably has, like, dude probably has, like mental that health disorder or something. probably going to go to jail now for fucking manslaughter because mm-hmm. the fucking old man had to get out of his car. Yeah, you know, there should be considerations for your special cases like that. Yeah, that Or I guess every case is a special case, but, like... You shouldn't go to, should you go to jail? I don't know. Also, it's like, how did he die, right? He slipped and hit a curb? Okay, He that's got like, pushed. He, as he was walking away, like, I guess the guy pushed him, and, like, he, like, fell and hit his head. Like, it's like, to me, chop it up to it being an accident, you know? He was like, old, you know? Like, how, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> how much longer did he Dude, have? the other, I, yeah, I don't think I... the wrong time. I don't know, but then so many people that are homeless and old and, like, have a are in tough disorders tough shit. times could be senile or just like out of their fucking wits I don't know or but maybe also too like you know I wouldn't you know I'm not supporting it or anything but old people should probably get checked more often too oh for sure like sometimes they be wilding out sometimes you know? my grandma will be driving I'm like dude like, come on man she, <laughs> yeah she, like, she, in my, she in my car the other day in the driveway <laughs> dude like my car's my car was parked in the driveway and she just backed out and she just like rear-ended my car in the driveway. It's like all casual. And like now she felt all bad about it and shit because the day before 
she had ba- someone had like hit her car and like tried to do a hit and run, dude. And my grandma started chasing him and shit, oh, like dude. for miles. Don't. And she was like calling my mom and like calling my uncle and like, like someone hit my car. My mom was like, "What are you doing? Like stop!" Oh, and like she's all tweeting. And the next day she hit my car. Oh. She chased somebody that hit her car. In her car, yeah. She chased him down. Damn. She's trying to get the license plate. She said. She get it. It's probably no, my grandma, so. dude. It's probably my grandma that hear your oh. grandma. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> but see, like in that case, like if an old person chased you down, I guess that's a grandma. But dude, like someone I care about, or yeah, so, if someone I care about has to be in danger for me to like, like real danger for me to consider getting in any fight. If if I'm provided like the ability to think about it for a second, you know, sometimes you could be in a situation where like shit just happens. But if like, I try to avoid basically hits, any. If someone like damages my property, I'm gonna have to fight them. Dude, if someone blew my fucking car up right now, I would be like, "Well, I'll call the cops." <laughs> like, like, I'm not trying to fight people, dude. What about you? I'm not trying to get kicked in the head, fucking choked out, curb stomped. Okay, dude. So if they blew, if they blew up your car and then you want to go fight them and then they beat your ass also, like, <laughs> <laughs> then the, that that sucks. To, dude, then limit, it's like, all right, well you deserve it. You limit your ass, dude. But if like you, if he blows up your car and then you go and beat his ass and then you sue him and then it's just like you feel a little bit better. Nah, because then if you beat his ass, they're gonna fucking sue you. For what? For beating their I'm ass. I'm gonna say you try to kill me. I was near the car. He almost killed me. I get. Dude, I don't want to go deal with the legalities. And all that shit. I'm trying to get her super technical one day. Dude, you can. Somebody can literally punch you, and then because you punch them back harder, like they can sue you. Not if they hit me first. Look, I've only reacted physically to somebody, like not a fight, but like that kind of situation once in my life, and I immediately regretted it because the person who got really hurt. When was that? Freshman year, we used to eat uh, lunch at the steps. But like the H buildings, right? By the senior quad, like the stair, the staircase. Uh-huh. Like if you're in freaking what are the Spanish class? Oh, you didn't take Spanish, right? Talking about the girl. I was AP Spanish, baby. Yeah, I mean you didn't take regular Spanish, like yeah, I did. Did yeah. you? Yeah, I did. Did you take the Mexican guy, Contreras? Oh no, I only just took, uh, I just took. It wasn't a girl. No, okay. So we're eating lunch out there, and we're at the top of the stairs, and Matthew Maligli walks behind me, or behind us, and he teabags like two people. <laughs> including me, right? As he's approaching the stairs to walk down. I didn't really know who it was. I just felt somebody fucking like teabag me, right? Walk with her shorts straight over the back of my head, like fucking just disrespect. So I just instinctually <laughs> grabbed or fucking just pushed whoever it was down the stairs. <laughs> and like, it just, I didn't really like, it, it would be different if we were just, you know, on the grass or something and just like push the shit out of them or whatever, right? But immediately I was like, oh, fuck, dude. Because you see someone rolling down the stairs, like hit their head or freaking break their arm or some shit. Like, dude, but did you feel, but that's like sexual harassment. Yeah. Not back then. That's true. <laughs> that's true. It's definitely... I would have a case back then. Yeah. yeah dude, no, but you don't remember when, who, uh, who hit Danny, the fucking Asian one? Chow? The candle one, Danny Chow. Dude, he hit all of them. Who, who, like, smacked his ass and, like, got a fucking sexual harassment charge? Was it, like, Armin or something? <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure that wasn't Armin, but... <laughs> Do you remember that? <laughs> I could see someone like Armin doing that. Someone <laughs> smacked this dude's ass and, like, this dude, like, su- like sued him for, like, t- total school. Dude, talk about sexual harassment. Freaking freshman year, <laughs> David Ruby uh, was in the same English class as me. This is Hanson's class, right? He freaking... Every once in a while, he'd be like, "Hey, Danny," and like, he had he would have his hand like down, like, like by his shorts, right? Like you think he was gonna do one of those, right? Like, and then like I would, you know, freaking, what's that game called? I don't even know. Just With like the little, the thing. little circle yeah. game or whatever to get punched. Hey, so I turn over and look, but try not to. <laughs> and he would just have his nut straight out <laughs> of his Someone shorts. Would always do that shit. Like squeezing them. Yeah. It all gross. But like, dude, you get in serious trouble for that. But I would just, days, dude, I oh would just die laughing. It's so funny, dude. Oh my god. 
<laughs> or maybe not. I don't know. Maybe nowadays it isn't as dramatic as the media will have you like have it seem. Yeah, I don't know. There's probably I don't know what it's like to be. No, there's probably some wild shit going on in high school right now. Yeah, I don't know what it's like it's to probably be. Probably just even know. wilder. Yeah. It has to be, yeah. Yeah, for as much media coverage there is for like people who are sensitive, Dude, you there's know there's shit. equal wild shit, right? There's kids at school smoking jewels. They're doing, oh, yeah, they're doing just, shit. Dude, yeah, like just getting high as fuck with yeah, their like the, the undeveloped fuck, brains. Dude, with this shit, imagine having this in high school. I'd be getting fucked up and like during class, like <laughs> in the bathroom. You're telling me you wouldn't be going to the bathroom and hit your fucking vape pen? Smoking in the boys' room. Damn, that would be crazy. I couldn't even imagine. I'm actually pretty thankful. And then social media too. Yeah, yeah social media wasn't shit. as big when we were. Do you not even I mean, have, I guess it's always getting bigger, right? I like, didn't have an Instagram until I, uh, we graduated. Do you have a MySpace? I never had a MySpace. Yeah, yeah me neither. I did, yeah, for a little bit. MySpace was cool. I never had a, a MySpace. Yeah. I think one of the cool features of MySpace, you know, I never had one, is like the song thing. Yeah. I kind of wish that like Instagram would have like... That's true. You could put like... a Like if like someone goes to your page, uh-huh. they could like press yeah. play and it's like... You can do stories now with music. That's true. Like you used to be able to customize your profile and whatnot. You used to, like you used to have to like code your like code your web like program it. Yeah, you just like go online and like Google to put like a little templates. freaking uh, GIF or whatever. Like yeah, <laughs> or, like a little emoji of somebody like shuffling or something. Now it's just like an option. <laughs> That's shuffling. Damn. Yeah, school's probably wild now. Uh, I'd be afraid to have kids, dude. I feel like culture changes so quickly that as a parent, you can't keep dude, up with a lot of shit. crazy when, we, like, our kids are, like, in high school. I was yeah. listening to uh, a Ben Baller podcast, and he was saying how, like, he was watching... Did you watch that show, Euphoria? I haven't. On I HBO. see it. I gotta watch. He was story. like, "Damn! Like I remember the wild shit I used to do when I was like a teenager, uh-huh. and like now him looking like at that now, like thinking about the shit with the because like it, it deals with a bunch of bullshit or not? I wouldn't no, like serious wouldn't, stuff. I, yeah, I, wouldn't, I don't want to say bullshit. No, I, I understand a bunch of shit. Yeah, um, a bunch of like serious. There's like transgender. There's a bunch of like there's a lot of like LGBTQ focused stuff in that uh, series." And, like, he's, like, damn, the amount of, like, because they're also, like, doing drugs and a bunch of shit. Mm-hmm. He's, like, damn, like, imagine, like, your kids being in that scenario in, like, high school oh, nowadays. Be stressful. Because, like, scary. really, I don't think we were really exposed to it as much in terms of, like, drugs and shit. Personally, I didn't and feel And I don't know was. if that's, like, how it is now. In high school? Yeah. Like, do you think it's a lot more talked about like and there's a lot more shit going on than there was when we were there dude i heard that um freaking like nudes and shit like that is such a big thing in high school because everyone has smartphones and like i think there's honestly more of everything like just because everybody's aware of everything now yeah yeah like the culture around like sex even like at a young age is like different yeah yeah Well, because it's not anything new now. Back in the day, like, unless, like, you were exposed to something, then you knew about it. Yeah. Now it's like you literally see kids on Instagram popping shit or smoking whatever or doing stupid shit. So it just becomes real. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't become as, uh, honestly, person. as bad just because you've already seen it. Fuck. How do you feel about, okay, so, like, when I see what you guys are, like, up to... With the Rhythm Project. And what's the other one called? House Project. House Project. I kind of automatically want to liken it to, like, Adam22. And, like, yeah. the No Jumper podcast. Exactly. And it might be out, too. Yeah. Let me get another one. Um, How do you feel about that comparison? Oh, I think, um, I think you're, you're spot on. Um, I think... And uh, do you think his approach to how he's gained pep- uh, popularity is something that you find is necessary? I think that was one of like the main it? things that when I first like 
approached Hector about really turning this, turning this into a business was like, this is like the structure. Like, look at this. Look at what Adam Twenty Two is doing, and like, check this out. And like, were you aware of this? Did you know who he was? Like, you were ready to Adam. Uh, he showed like, me the podcast and I you. started watching it. Um, just because it was honestly just like entertaining as fuck. <laughs> Dude, yeah, and this dude had already been out for so long, and like, I missed his like first initial pop up when he was like doing the Xavier Wolf, the like, uh, Puya and like Suicide Boys, and he got real popping. Like, I didn't get in till after, like I started watching YouTube and shit, mm-hmm. and like that's kind of what started making making me get into it, just not having a fucking cable and watching YouTube. When did you start watching YouTube, like the way you say it, it makes it sound like that's. Um, a big part of the content you consume. Yeah, I know. I think after when I got fucking when I came back from slow, like I came back in my room, didn't have a fucking cable box. Okay. So I was just watching like uh Netflix, HBO, streaming. YouTube. Yeah. Yeah, like streaming stuff. And I think I just started learning about the rap or I was learning about podcasts with like Joe Rogan shit a lot like before and then, like, I started watching, I don't even know who the first one was, but it was just, like, rap podcasts and rap artists, like, I really started to fuck with. And, like, oh, okay, that I just started watching that, like, every day, pretty much. And that was kind of, like, I, I started from, like, at first, when we first started, when I first started, like, even thinking about any of this shit, I was, like, you can basically do what Adam 22 is doing on the rap side and just, like, do the EDM shit. And you can pretty much started off like that and like yeah I mean it's a good good business model do you have a a moral or an ethical opinion at all of like how he's combined his like relationship and how his like content and stuff has become more pervasive in pop culture because of his relationship and like how he approaches like, like that side of things his his girlfriend yeah like his, straight up his girlfriend what about it? Because like his girlfriend's like freaking basically like a porn star. I mean, I want to want to I don't want to categorize categorize her a certain way. I mean, she's, in, she's it, in the but like porn industry. My my point being like people were highly critical of Kim Kardashian and her personal like rise in fame, and how it was attached to like the freaking who is it Ray J? Yeah, like the Ray J porno and all that shit. But like. From an outside perspective, I kind of see that like Adam Twenty Two's movement into the mainstream kind of uh-huh. was because was, of his girlfriend was kind of associated with like his really obscure approach that's similar to but, Kim Kardashian, but from her girlfriend side. But I, th- I think it was more than his girlfriend. You're right. I think he used a lot of girls. Porn stars, adult film stars. Dude, but uh-huh. there's like a there's a podcast where like he literally says, and he's talking to one of his homies. He's like, "How cool would it be to have a girlfriend, a hot girlfriend that you can just put in the thumbnails, and they can just kind of like be around or whatever?" And literally, he said that, and like a couple months later, he had a girlfriend with like a big ass that he can put in his thumbnails. That he could <laughs> kind of like, you know, I don't want to say like. Well, actually, he'd probably say like, use in a sense. And I think I don't think he went with in, with the intention of like keeping that girlfriend, but it kind of just like now they're in an actual relationship. So I don't I don't really think I have anything against the way he rose to fame in terms of like using his relationship to do so. It was also really smart too because his audience is like basically little little boys. Yeah, it's the, it's the rap scene. Like yeah, I don't. By the way, I don't want to like mischaracterize him. I actually do respect like the stuff they do, and I could care less like how they approach their fame and stuff i'm just wondering because like when we were growing up like it kind of goes how it goes to show how culture has changed like kim kardashian got a lot of public animosity and hate in reality people gravitate more towards her because of that appeal but nowadays it's almost like just a good like an acceptable technique almost not saying that they designed it that way but if well, they I did, as, a, as like effective. I think as a famous person, you're always gonna get more famous by being by dating another famous person. Mm. Yeah, 
sounds like a compounding effect for sure. Like Kanye married Kim Kardashian. Now look at them. Uh, all successful like people that have lasted in the industry have probably I, I mean uh, Swiss Beats married uh, I think Alicia Keys or whoever he married uh, Jay Z Beyonce like a lot of like the top people ended up marrying other influential people in the industry and were able to continue their growth because I think like people want to see that like celebrity couple like mm -hmm. it's enticing for people to see that and like from a media perspective for sure from, like a consumer it's like a call it's like a collaboration basically yeah exactly like you're able to pick each other's fans like or get each other's fans and like you know it's i think it's easier to build like that so i think they both use that effect effectively and were able to both grow because they both had adam 22 and like land of the plug mm -hmm. I think like sub 100,000 subscribers or followers before they like got together. That's another thing too. Like they, they each had their own following. Like, yeah. I'm not like super privy on her past. Cause I mean, I didn't know her. Well, no, no, no. It's just like but... from the standpoint that like somebody like Kim, when she came up, it was more so like she was around certain people and then she got famous because of a video. Like, yeah, Adam 22. Oh, Oh, Kim K. Yeah. Oh, okay. Like Adam and Lena were, they were more underground, but they had followings, mm -hmm. and they happened to come together for that reason, and then they kind of essentially blew each other up more. But at least they were already doing something. Because he's also talked about how she was like already rich and stuff too, and how well, that's was, like, like a big part. She was like rich, but she was already like, she, I think she graduated from like Santa Cruz or something. So she had like a regular job. She was doing like some regular shit. Uh huh. And then they got together. And he was like, I don't know, you can just do more shit, like, whatever. And then, I don't know, she, I think, got into, like, camming or what, whatnot. And then, yeah, and then she blew up on that. Yeah. And then, but he was able to use, like, her, like, his, his market and, like, pass it on to her. And, like, shit, he's capitalizing off that shit. You know what I mean? They're both rich. They just bought a house. I mean, realistically, it's not like. Depends how you look at it. <laughs> Can you actually make money off of that? Oh my god, dude! Ah, oh. <laughs> streaming, dude. Snapchat Premium. I yeah, dude. I don't know. Fuck. I don't know who could be paying out there for like that shit. You no, know I mean? imagine like. Dude, I, I don't know, dude. I know people that have paid money for shit like that. Yeah, so maybe. Why, but like, it, 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 it wouldn't like, be as surprising as you think, too. Dude, but like, <laughs> I think you're gonna pay thirty dollars a month. That's how much it is? I don't know. I think it's like... <laughs> <laughs> I like know all the prices. No, I, yeah. I definitely like... I've seen the price get... For the premium snap, dude? <laughs> no, it's, it's like... I think it starts around 30 bucks. But no, you can go up to like hundreds of dollars. Dude. I imagine how... Like... I wanted... I, I could imagine that the market for guys... The like, like cam guys... I don't even know if that's a thing. But if that's a market, I can imagine it's not as lucrative... As Probably cam not. girls, right? Probably not. But if it was, there would be so many dudes just at home well, fucking I mean, recording themselves, <laughs> checking off, <laughs> making a living like that. I don't know about that, dude. Yeah, yeah. dude. That, dude, <laughs> dude. dude. No, no, no. I'm going off the premise that there's so many more pervs that are guys. Than girls, which could be wrong. Know, yeah, exactly. So, but a, girl, a girl's but not like gonna guys go are online. fucking. No, but guys are fucking weird, dude. I'm just saying. I think it's like a, a weird job that to be had, and I think if the market was there to for guys, there'd be way more like weird. Dudes. Oh, you're talking about if the market was there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It could, but it could oh, be for sure. There would be way more weird. Guys would do crazy shit. Yeah. Yeah, that's sure. what I'm saying. Guys would take it to like to the extreme. You know, like it would yeah. be like extreme sports and fucking like jacking off and stuff. <laughs> Yeah, like freaking Special Olympics or whatever. Not Special Olympics. I know what you're talking about. Uh, the the fucking, not, uh, spe not Special Olympics. <laughs> this, that fucking too, Pain but, uh, Olympics. Yeah, the Pain Olympics. Oh my god. Yeah. Dude, dude, that was crazy. Yeah, I, no, my point is like, guys are fucking just oh disgusting. Oh my god, speaking of like some fucking... If you paid a guy enough, you do basically anything. Dude. That's what I'm trying to say. No shame. No shame whatsoever. Yeah, that's fucked. Remember that one time like a while back when we were in like probably high school, I think. 
when we fucking <laughs> never mind. I'm not even gonna talk about it. <laughs> the videos? Yeah, dude. Remember that shit? <laughs> Dude, dude, like the videos of like people like killing themselves or like people throwing like cats off like top of buildings and shit. Like, oh, the like the cartel videos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The cartel ones. Dude, yeah. yeah you remember yeah. we were just chilling in dude, your yeah, living room? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude. I stopped watching stuff like that, man. Dude, I only watch stuff like that like with you guys. With the homies, like. <laughs> <laughs> no, I would watch way too much just like nasty, bad stuff, like evil stuff. Like, I don't even believe in, like, evil or, like, I believe there's wrong, you know, right and wrong. But I don't necessarily believe in, like, extra, like, devil and shit like that. But, uh... I think that's even more scary, dude. But, for sure, there's something, like, real bad and, like, not good for you of, like, watching bad shit. I don't, yeah, I don't know. Consistently? Maybe. You're probably just, like, a Oh, little... dude, it can't be good for you. Yeah, consistently it can't be, right? Yeah. Probably yeah, no, no, definitely. Not. I don't know. I feel like it desensitizes you and stuff. Yeah, it'd become normalized to you. Plus I don't think it's good to have certain like images available so, yeah, for your right imagination. Yeah, right now like for some reason I keep having an image of like some dude getting his head chopped off. Dude, I just like, keep right now the one minute? where the yeah, guy's right on now. top of the train and he touches the wire. Oh yeah. He I think that shit's slows. funny, I'm not gonna lie. The electric no, 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 no. not not that people die, but like the ones where it's like you get electrocuted for doing some stupid shit. I don't think it's shit. funny. I don't think it's funny, dude. dude there was another <laughs> one where, the knife, where the knife was too little, so it was just going like. <laughs> okay, no, 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 that I can't, I can't do. I don't know. I don't, That's crazy. I think some accidents are funny, but uh, maybe it's because some of them you don't know if the person died or not, or it's. Like, they look like they lived. They just I got think, fucked up. I mean, Twitter, dude, the type of shit, like, you can see on Twitter nowadays is, like... Yeah, Twitter's nice. Like, hard, dude. Yeah, Twitter's like, weird. You just, you're, you, like, you could just be scrolling and, like, you just see someone die. Twitter's weird because, like, they're freaking... They're... They don't have any, like, uh, like when sneak Twitter, like... The rules. It, yeah. yeah, the rules for what you're allowed to say or display on Twitter is, like, so obscure. You like, see, you so can you show can people getting... You anything. Yeah, you could see people getting, like, fucked up, killed fucked like anything like that right but you can't use certain like non-liberal like yeah you can get kicked off like language like, fucking being right wing yeah yeah it's like you can show the other shit but you can't be like right wing but you can take like 10 dicks up your ass <laughs> and like you're chilling like you're cool it's, it's, about, it's about the art form huh? it's art oh my god no think... like literally like that's that's how it's protected dude like legally <laughs> like pornography and shit Fuck, this is so crazy as the art form, yeah, you can't you can't discriminate against it. <coughs> but I guess, dude, the like, problem with that, or the, an issue I could see being raised from that kind of like openness, is that like there's weird shit. There's some weird shit too. In what? In porn? I mean, in life in general, dude. There's some weird. Shit. Yeah, yeah, in porn too. But like, especially when it comes to sexuality. The range of what, like, tickles people's fancy is so broad <laughs> that there are certain things where it's, like, you start getting a dicey, like, dicey situations of, like, what are you displaying? Violence yeah. or, like, sex? Well, yeah, because then you can just can they happen simultaneously? anything is, like, an art form, really. Yeah. Just because you say it is. Basically what I'm saying, like, the subjectivity of what an art form really is is, yeah. like. Murder can be an art form. That's what I'm saying. It's a sport. Oh, my God, dude. Perfect I guess shot. it depends on your perspective, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, yeah if you're super if vegan. You're a sniper? You no, know, also, if you're, like, super vegan, you think that, like, animals are sentient beings, like, and they deserve human rights or the equivalent, and they show, like, butchering videos on freaking Instagram. Yeah, that's fucked up. But, I mean, we got to eat. Yeah, I mean, you could eat plants, I guess. Yeah, that's true. That's pretty, I mean, like <laughs> the gotta eat argument, I guess, doesn't always work. I don't know, dude. Who knows? I just dude. think it's yeah, it's kind of fucked up that like you just fucking beating a pig in the back of the head with a with the a bat. F- <laughs> but like, what? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah what happens, that's how they'd be killing them. Like, they'll just be walking up and like, hey, what's up, bro? Oh. No, dude, I've seen terrible videos. Like people that you know, like there's like I said, there's good and bad people that work everywhere, and there's certainly some bad people who do fucked up shit to animals that work in, like, slaughterhouses. 
that, take that's, your ass. Yeah. Yeah. Like, that I'm, sounds better now. You're probably just bored, you know? Instead of saying, like, yeah, so you just beat it ass. <laughs> <laughs> Which is also true, but yeah. My mom, uh, we were, like, coming home from, like, the beach earlier, and we drove past uh, some of these houses that had, like, horses or somehow like a little freaking horse thing, right? And there's like a horse on its side. And it, it kind of looked like it was struggling to get up. My mom was like, oh, they're looking up for a horse. And like, we kept watching it as we drove past, like in the freaking, looking out the window, right? And eventually like it caught up and like, then it looked like it was playing. Oh, it was probably just like, like the oh, or something. It was just chilling, right? <laughs> 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 Tranquilized. It was just chilling, right? And, but the way my mom reacted to that, like she had a visceral re- reaction to seeing a horse that fell over that looked like it couldn't get up. Like, oh, poor thing, right? And I was thinking like, because we were driving to in and out I hadn't told her I wanted to get that yet, but they asked me and I was eventually was going to say that, right? And I was thinking like, that elicited a reaction, but we're about to go eat freaking cows. That's true. I guess it's kind of like, like is a horse and a cow is one any more well, important than the other? Well, you can't eat horse. Horse isn't technically edible. So How's it not technically it? edible? People eat a horse all the time. Yeah. They put well, it we don't Bur- consider a horse King, like edible. Yeah, because we don't live in France. Dude, they put it in Burger King. No, they don't. They used to back in the day. Yeah, we they got caught up. It. But like, no, we don't. Uh, yeah, I get our cultural norm. Yeah, like doesn't have us consuming so horse very often. Yeah, so we don't see like a horse as an animal that we eat. Whereas, like, if we see a fucking cow like laid over, I, I'll probably see a cow and it's like, oh, it's it's probably de- it's dead. Like, all right, well, all right, you know, like, what can you do now? Yeah. But- Whereas, if I saw a horse laid over and dead, I'd be like, damn, yeah, I'm poor horse, you know. But if it's a cow or, like, a pig, you're just like, all right, well, you know. I'm pretty sure I make the same reaction if I see, like, a deer on the freeway. Actually, just kidding. Unless it's, like, a dog. If I see, like, a dog that's run over on oh, the freeway. poor dog. I'm, I'm going to start crying and shit, you know? Dude, I kicked if the it's, like, shit a deer, out of the dog the other day. What the f- <laughs> One time I got a skunk. Wait, let me tell a story to you. Wait, what'd you say? I said I kicked the shit out of the dog the other on day. On purpose? Oh, my God. <laughs> I didn't even hear you say that. What the fuck? Not on purpose. But still, Why? connected shin to forehead, dude. For what? Uh, I was walking. Who's Br- dog? I was walking Brittany's dogs, right? Oh shit! Um, and like I was taking care of the dogs and stuff like that. So I was taking them on walks every day. What kind day. of dogs? Two little, um, like Shih Tzu Just mixes. Little dogs, little. Yeah, they're like little white ones, right? And out of nowhere, like we're walking, right? Out of nowhere, my peripheral vision, I see like this blur just like coming at us. Out of fucking nowhere, like out of bushes or some shit, right? So I turn around and like instinctually stick my leg out like really hard and quick because I just see a thing coming at like Brittany's dogs. Yeah, so I don't want them to get hurt, right? So I turn like fling my leg out and it was a dog. <laughs> like the neighbor's dog ran out of the yard and I like straight hit it hard as fuck in the head with my shin. And then another one came out. So Good thing I stunned that one because, <laughs> yeah, that one was, was that like. That one big or was it? They were, no, they weren't, they weren't big at all, actually. Uh, they were like Shibu Inu sized. Damn, like me, like up. medium, small sized so dogs. you wouldn't hit an old man, but you hit a dog. <clears throat> That's why I said if somebody I cared about, and I guess I'm personifying these dogs, I care about them too. But like if someone I care about is in danger, then I guess I'll react as necessary, but. I don't give a fuck with my car. I guess if I had a nice car. Kick the dog, dude. I mean, I care about Kick my car. I want to take care of my car, dude. but, like, I have insurance. You can't, like... If that, if that dog bit that dog and killed it... Oh. To kick a per- catch, catch me, kick a person, then dog. Oh, for sure. Like, that's... Unless the dog is, like, running... Out. Yeah, well... Dude, they were, they were kidding, biting and stuff. Fine, They're, like, like, nipping at it. I'm just saying. Well, okay, if it was a... Oh. <laughs> dude, dude, that shit. I'm tired of it. <laughs> if it was a bulldog, would you kick it? Does it matter what kind of dog it was? Oh, dude, if it's a bulldog, you gotta knock it out. Or, a pit, <laughs> or, or, or a pit or a pit bull or whatever. <clears throat> Out of necessity, it's different, I yeah, guess. It's different. You just do whatever it's to survive. <laughs> the dog. You ever got? You ever had beef with the dog? You ever had to find? I got dog? Bit, I got bit yeah, dude. dog. My dog helped me out though. My German Shepherd. But he. <laughs> Okay, what did you say? I was walking my dog around the block and some other dog like ran up on us. And like my dog was kind of just like whatever at first, but then it got like really close. And if like, my dog bit the other dog, 
Because it's like, <laughs> what the fuck? Like, get away, you know? Did he attack to you? Well, we were just walking, and then this dog comes running at us, and then it didn't get that close at first, and then it got closer, and then my dog was just like, what the fuck? Like, get away. And then, like, we kept walking, and then it came after us, and then my dog bit that dog because it got Damn, really close. Damn, yeah. the homie. Exactly. Yeah, one time I kicked a ball over my fence, and I went to go get it. And the neighbor was like, oh, yeah, like, he's chill. Like, it was a fucking German Shepherd, dude. <laughs> and, like, I go outside and, like, just start walking. And, like, I, me, and, me and the dog make, like, eye contact. And, you know, like, the same not supposed to make eye contact with a dog. Like, me and the dude just stared down. Oh, and shit. I looked at him and I just, I was just like, oh, fuck. And I just started running. I was like a little kid. <laughs> she goes, Sam, Boom, just bites my leg. Just, like, Shoot. fucking starts Okay, he didn't start tearing my shit. Oh, <laughs> no, he just like bit my leg, and like the my neighbor like grabbed him, was like, "No!" And I just started crying and shit, and like he fucked my leg up. Damn. <laughs> Fuck that German Shepherd. <laughs> I was scared of dogs so for a little, little while. Freaking rabies shot. Yeah, Ooh, that was fucked up. Damn. Have you ever been really fucked up? Off what? Like injured. Uh, <laughs> define, define really fucked up. I don't know, like Snap City, like uh, di- like di- like in what like how, like okay, I, like it didn't mean anything, like fucking uh, in the hospital with like the f- like I'm not the flu, but like say you got the flu really bad, and you had to get hospitalized. Honestly, or, the like, worst thing I've probably done is like broken arm or something. Come really close, kick to off at his ankle. football game, and someone get fucking gets, <laughs> you get trucked. Honestly, that wasn't that bad. It wasn't that bad. I never saw it. From anyway. from a from an injury standpoint, it wasn't that bad. I've yeah, you're fine. Worse, yeah. I got kicked in the. Well, sorry. So, what were you gonna say? Like, oh. I almost broke an ankle on a trampoline. That's it. Just almost broke an ankle. It was like a grade three sprain. My foot was like purple and you green. You ever broken anything? Uh, but, no. Damn, bro. That's extreme. No. Damn, dude. I I sprain a lot of stuff, but I don't break things. I Spray. broke my fucking I broke my like knee. Great also Spray my Spray my ankle. Just like so you know how bad it was. <laughs> Inches from a blowout. Like, dude. dude, I couldn't put a sock on. <laughs> Wait, when was this? Put a sock on. This was like when I was like a kid, like uh, uh was probably like nine. Yeah. Have you ever had a near death experience? Bro. It's debatable. Yeah, when we hit the cow. It's debatable. When I hit the cow. You hit a cow? Yeah, you guys know that story? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, you weren't with him? No. Oh, no I thought around. you were answering for him. Like, you were... no, oh, yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. I remember story. that. I remember that. Yeah, yeah. I, went to, well, I went to Mexico. Um, This was like probably like 2008 to 2010, mm-hmm. somewhere around there. So I was still like a kid. Went to Mexico riding quads. Like, there was this hill. I fucking f- gunned over this hill that wasn't like a, it was like a rounded one. Not like flat. Yeah. And so I fly off and I break my collarbone, right? Dude. So my collarbone was broken. We're driving back from Mexico. And I pay for one of the toll roads. And it's like just starting to get dark. Two-lane highway. My dad's just driving. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, fucking cows just start driving, like coming on the freeway. And there was like three of them. Uh, but we were going like 80 miles an hour. And you uh. can't really like, I don't know. You just didn't see them, you know? They were just fucking random cows. You're not going to be expecting something and just randomly walk on there holy fuck and so my dad like tries to slam on the brakes and keep it like straight so we wouldn't swerve off what kind of car it was like a big suburban we were like loaded with a bunch of shit shit. because we were just coming back from vacation and uh yeah so we hit the cow like the car goes up dude the car went up yeah the car goes up oh my god the cow like flies over right and like we just start fucking swerving (laughs) And like the Dude, car cow going 80? Yeah, so I'm in the I'm in like the back seat, like in the third row. What the fuck? Like with, I'm with like the fucking sling on my collarbone and shit, like all fucked up. And Adam's like, oh, it's okay, to, it's I'm a cow. Go to sleep. Like, I'm about to go to sleep. <laughs> if it was a horse, you'd been crying. Next thing you know, boom. Like I hit the fucking seat. I didn't have a seatbelt on. Oh. Like my shit was fucked up. I started having like a fucking panic attack. Because like, I don't know. Dude, I was like half falling asleep so I thought we that guy had gone over a cliff dude I thought like <laughs> shit was done he just died like... dude because hearing that like metal crash was was some of like yeah, dude, ridiculous the, shit the sound of a car crash I'll show you guys so a picture after, but like it was ridiculous and so I thought we were I thought we were dying I just like grabbed my sister and I was like oh shit I don't even know what happened and 
Yeah, dude, we pulled over to the side. Oh I'm like God. hyperventilating and shit. Like, oh if I died, God. like, we had to get out. You guys are lucky you didn't all fucking die. Yeah, I know. People really? hit like deers and shit, and like they go through the windshield and freaking decapitate everybody in the front seat. Like, for real, this shit gets bad. That that would make. Or imagine crazy. taking like a uh, freaking buck horns to the oh chest, my like God. like Final Destination style. Have you seen that picture where it's like a like a bullfighter, and like he gets like horned and through the eye socket? Have you ever seen that? And <laughs> Dude, it's no, out his head? no, I haven't seen yeah, that. Yeah, I saw it on Twitter. Oh my god, it's crazy. Do you got tagging and stuff? Oh, jeez. Yeah, heck, you never had your death experience? Not anything like that, dude, no. Damn. Yeah, no, definitely not. Come on, man, do something. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna go hit a cow real quick. Dude. Fuck. Near. Not even like driving or anything? Didn't you drive over a freaking like fridge? <laughs> nah, it was. This is like crazy. It wasn't even bad. I got a, a hole in my gas tank. <laughs> going over, you probably knows. almost died the worst death, dude. Going over, who knows? A little what flame on the comes Boom, and just like, blows up. <laughs> nah, it wasn't bad. It wasn't bad. Uh, whatever. It's yeah, like a cardboard of, box or something, huh? The, it was a cardboard box, but there was stuff in it. I don't know what it was. Yeah, I just fucked like it. A package for of stuff. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> a fridge. I thought you drove over something big. I can't remember. <laughs> In a car? <laughs> yeah. That would have been a car crash. <laughs> I can't, dude, I can't tell you the number of times where, like, I've been driving home from work and seen, like, a ladder on the fucking freeway and shit. Yeah. <sighs> Stuff like that you can go over, though. That's when you can't go over it. No, you can't. A ladder? If it's not supposed to. If it's, you shouldn't, but if you if, have to. If you go over a ladder... Your car's gonna jump. You're gonna go. No, 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 dude, it's fucking facing you. <laughs> Long ways. Oh, it goes in between your middle. tires. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like this, you just got over it. I thought it was horizontal. Speed bump. Yeah. Oh, just launch. God. Yeah, I thought it was gonna be open like that. Like I, I thought someone had opened it. Oh my god. In the middle of the freeway. Oh my god. So, what is your guys' goal for your two brands? What? I don't know. Like, are you guys trying to make it a full time job? Is it a side hustle? Like Hector, what are you what are you doing right now besides you tr- like are you training at a gym right now? Uh yeah, I'm training people. Um I did it more so just cuz of the the freedom. Um just cuz like you make your own hours and stuff, so um whether that's going to allow me to do other work for this or just like when we have to go like out of town and stuff like that to mm-hmm. have like the freedom to be able to do all that. Um, as far as what we're trying to do with it, I mean, everybody wants to only do this. Right. But at the same time, like if it's just a really good side hustle at the end of the day, like who really cares, you know? Um, Cause I think the main thing to keep in mind is like, just don't have one Not, like, one plan, but, like, don't have one thing that's going to, like, put you ahead, you know? Like, make or break you? Yeah, exactly. So, even, like, whether that just means, like, doing the training stuff and then, like, the music stuff, but Mm -hmm. also, like, within the music stuff, like, we've touched on how it's not just about doing one thing, you know? For multiple multiple reasons. So, what kinds of things do you want to, like, do? Um, So, we've done mixes... Um, mixes are cool the only thing about that is it's not necessarily any type of like real release just because it's using other people's music Um, but we just had like this Shaq compilation Um, we had like a pretty good opportunity to actually put something out that was original Uh Um, so we're going to start doing a little bit more of that Um, yeah we're just like producing our our own content more than anything whether it be like Event production, uh, like content production in terms of like, yeah, like you said, now we're going to be able to the ones that are um, doing that uh, and more of as a record label now instead of, because mixes, although you're putting them out, it's not your work on, it's just like someone, it's a mix, you know, you can't label that as like a, someone's individual work. Yeah. Um, whereas now I think we're going to be able to 
put out content that's our own that we're producing even though we're, we've been doing that with like the interviews and stuff I think now more like on the event side like you want to produce music no 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 like or you want to produce uh, like uh, it's event production media production like content production okay. like films filming and video content okay in the music scene what do producers do like do these provide the funds what for does what? a producer do? Yeah, like, are there like, yeah? What does a producer do in the music scene? Like, what is their role in so the music making it's process? It's different from hip hop. I think I know what you're saying. Like a hip a hip hop producer will meet up with the a rapper. Yeah, I'm thinking and, from that. And lens. they'll mesh, and then the producer will be on there, rerunning like the beats and stuff. What like all that stuff? A producer and EDM. I, yeah, like there's a difference between a DJ and a producer. So like, there's DJs that only DJ. That's mm-hmm. only mixing. And then there are some people that only produce. Like, if you tell them to play a show, like, they're going to struggle just because they don't know how to mix, you know? Um, uh, but honestly, to be something, you need to do both. Like, you need to be able to make music and you need to mix. Because if you only DJ, you can only get so far. Okay, okay. I, I see how the definition of producer wouldn't translate to, like, what you guys are doing then. But, yeah, because uh, like on the hip-hop side, you're going to have a producer that's producing beats. Or, like, producing, like, the actual, all of, like, the, and he's going to be doing, like, beat making, engineering, like, all together. Or he could be, like, a DJ Khaled, who's, like, an executive producer, who's uh-huh. putting this uh, rapper, this singer with this uh, beat maker, like, this D- DJ, but like, not really DJ, but, like, someone like Kenny Beats or something. Mm-hmm. And, like, that can also be a producer, because you're executive producing, you ha- you're the one that's, like, putting it together. But yeah, it's a lot more incomplete on the EDM side from from a production sense. Um, is there something akin to like a label in EDM or like labels, like how it is like in rap or hip hop? I guess. I uh, guess other genres, other mainstream genre genres. There are labels. Um, I think as far as an industry, there's definitely way more of a hip hop industry. Uh huh. Like, um, there's more money in it for sure. Yeah, like, like there's some consumers. people in EDM that have reached that that type of level, um, but definitely it's just the beginning of it, or there's just not as many people yet, quite yet, you know. Got it. Yeah. Got it. So, what's like your immediate focus? Hosting an event, like your your immediate focus as far as like scaling your brands. Um, to host an event is to continue doing the podcast is to make sure those things uh, like you said mixes I know you guys are like hosting or like are you guys hosting like an hour, hourly or a weekly radio spot yeah so I mean that's those are some of the things like we've been doing but now it's like we've worked with a lot of people mm-hmm. um, we've helped a lot of people um, like get exposure and stuff yeah, even like production companies, stuff like that. So now it's like, okay, cool. Like now we get to do it, you know? Uh-huh. Um, yeah, like there's some people helping us out this time around. Um, but that's kind of the point. Like we don't really have to do it all on our own. Um, we've like made a good amount of connections, just like being around and stuff. And uh-huh. now we can do all of these things because we've met people that have production companies and we know all these artists and stuff like that. So now it's just like way easier to do it. It's just about like executing it now. Got it. What's your favorite aspect of what you're doing? Like those different roles you're playing? Um, I like curating. So like that means selecting certain people for mixes, um, knowing which sounds to put on. Mm-hmm. Um, just as an example, like the whole dubstep and rhythm thing. So like dubstep's been around, rhythm's been around too, but it was definitely more underground than even dubstep, right? But then it's like nowadays, it's really all about rhythm. It's not really about dubstep anymore. But unless you know the difference, it kind of sounds the same. Um, But like the people that are in the industry and kind of like, know what's up with things like they'll they'll really know the difference between the two and i think that's where it gets like more fun because um it's one thing for people to say they like edm but then it's like okay why do you like edm Mm -hmm. 
So, I mean, the only real difference between some of the newer genres are just them using different styles, different techniques that still sounds cool, but it sounds fresh, you know? So you would have had to like been exposed to a good amount of music to kind of understand all of that. Um, so not everybody can like, in a sense, get it in that way. Mm-hmm. So that's why like, I enjoy like curating just because it's like, it's your own like touch on the music industry, I guess. Cause I'm not going to be like a producer or whatnot. We're not going to be on that side of things. Right. But you can still throw your own little like tastes in there. That makes sense. Yeah. Leave the imprint. Adam, what about you? What's your favorite aspect of what you guys are doing? Um, like what what's fulfilling about it? Like, do to you be like- honest, I really like enjoy like the business part of it. Um, in terms of like connecting with different companies, like learning, uh, how to market yourself as a brand, like how to reach out to brands and get sponsor sponsorships, like how to socialize and how to like really network correctly and how to like build that because a lot of this shit has really been like network networking and it's just like it's it's really i think political in a sense the music scene especially in la and i think like figuring out how to like navigate amongst that like how to really start like a business from the ground up like that's the part I really like. What do you mean by political? Um, <laughs> yeah, dude, it's fucking political. Like, it's not always about the music. It's just like there's con- there's a fuck ton of competition in <clears throat> LA in terms of like different event production. Everyone's trying to do the the same shit. There's a lot of like people trying to like climb up the ladder, and not really giving a fuck about who they're stepping on to get there. Like a lot of like really choosing sides and like really you know like it's Uh, political it's political like like and figuring out like how to do that correctly and how to like not try to fuck people over and how to like get it done right i think is really gonna be beneficial in the long run in business in general so i think like that's one of the major things because this is like the prime industry i guess entertainment Mm mm-hmm as far as it being like fulfilling, um, I think it kind of goes back to why you're doing something. Um, so like for me, um, I've always been around this type of music and I suppose it just was one of those things that made me feel good type of thing. Mm. So it also feels, feels good to like share it. Um, when I, like when we started putting like the content out, it was just kind of like one, because I felt like I had a unique music taste um, and then like I guess because it was music that I genuinely enjoyed like other people would resonate with it too so that in and of itself is like a pretty cool feeling you know like you, who would have thought that this little subgenre actually has people other people that listen to it and then like you end up meeting these people and then become your friends like some of the artists that we work with now are just like our homies and stuff that's really cool and it's all because we freaking listen to rhythm like what the hell's rhythm you know (laughs) dude i've met people like straight up strangers that for whatever reason like edm will come up or whatever and they'll mention like the rhythm project or something like oh yeah i follow that instagram page or you know maybe i'll mention it and they'll be like oh yeah i already followed that page like what the fuck like how many thousand followers do you have on in total like 50 probably like 50,000 people. Like, that's fucking nuts. What the hell? Do you think... What percentage percentage of it do you think is, like, bots? Do you think there's many? Honestly, like, we don't... Ha- I don't think we have a lot of bots. I just think it's, or like, a, like people the really... algorithm in terms of, like, the reach. I just think it's... The, the algorithm doesn't let you reach enough people in general. So oh, for sure. So it's yeah. just, like... If you're not going to pay, you're not going to reach... We get people. pretty good reach for, like, what we're putting out. So I think oh, that's where, where we're looking at in terms of like engagement or, you know, I think it sounds cliche, but like really like, I mean, now more than anything, it's like who we know here in LA. Cause whereas before, like we were, it was, it was like a internet or Instagram thing. 
mm-hmm. now that we've like been establishing ourselves more in like LA I think I mean I think establishing yourself a real in connection LA, like in a real person a actual real is gonna, relationship is like really what's gonna help us grow in terms of like just like the internet the Instagram stuff yeah it's weird like followers and stuff helps for advertising purposes and things like that but you know and reach so to speak but like really what's gonna help anybody is like a real relationship yeah local stuff is important real recognition from real people Uh, what would you say is like the thing that frustrates you most about what you guys are up to Um, is there anything that disheartens you or is a lot of people just a letdown don't mind being unoriginal don't mind being unoriginal for the sake of saying that well like for the sake of saying like oh I'm a dubstep artist or we're in this music industry you know and I like that irritates you oh hell yeah cause yeah. it's like who wants to hear like it's fucked up right not like subpar stuff like who really wants to see stuff like that like do the people even putting it out want to see stuff like that hmm. like so do you not care about your content or like what's it about type of thing you know that's interesting your reaction makes me think like you're really about the uh the art form i think like your biggest concern at the end of the day which is cool because it means you really like what you're doing because like your reaction wasn't to criticize like any type of process that you guys have to do trying to be a business or like anything like that (laughs) you're immediately offended by people who are like unoriginal yeah because i think like if you're going to be involved in this, like, sure, it's like, do the other stuff on the side too, but don't only make it about everything else. You know, like if uh-huh. it's going to be like, if you're, I don't, I don't really know like what to compare this to, but like, if you're a, like a sports player, uh-huh. like you have to be a good athlete. And if you're not a good athlete, it's like a prerequisite, right? It's almost like the whole like Lonzo shit. Like it's okay. about basketball. It's about basketball. Like if he would have done a little bit better, uh-huh. like it, it probably wouldn't have backlashed on him as bad as it did. You know what I mean? But it was just such a big thing outside of basketball mm-hmm. that it's like, it's almost annoying at some point, you know? So in this sense, it's like, dude, like that. if you're going to be a producer, like cool, like it's cool to be a producer. Like everybody's going to like, it's, it's a cool feeling to have, right? If somebody likes your music, but dude, just like do it for the right reasons. Like be real. Yeah. Basically. <laughs> yeah. Cause it's, it's not gonna, it's not gonna last. You got to be genuine. That makes sense. What about you, Adam? What do you think? What was the question? Is there anything that you don't like, you don't like about what you're doing? Not because um, of the nature of the task necessarily. I just think but it comes with like being in LA where like everyone's trying so, so hard to like do their own shit and like get to the top, especially in like the media entertainment because it's like Hollywood or whatever LA. Mm-hmm. That it's just, like, as much as, like, I really enjoy, like, learning how to navigate, like, an in, like the political stuff, like, some of that shit, like, just kind of upsets me just because it's just, like, the way people handle certain things is just, like, fuck, you know, like, goddamn, you're dumb, you know, like, and, like, the politics of it, I don't know, just, like, that, that in itself, it's I'll, you know, like, I like it. And learning yeah. about having to do it, some of it itself is just like, fuck, dude, like, such bullshit. And even though, like, for example, one of the things is, like, you know, Insomniac? Mm-hmm. I was actually so researching like, them just the before you said Insomniac, I mean, it's smart on their end, right? They're, they're a big corporation, like, they just have, like, radius causes, right? But unfortunately, that takes like you can host you can host an event. So, yeah, is so, there if, so if they uh, no no no, so if they book an artist, okay, like let's say in San Bernardino, mm-hmm. there's a certain radius like that that artist can't play for a certain amount of time, so that the fans of that artist go see them at that venue, right? And I just think like something like that, where like big corporations are now like not allowing smaller corporations it's to. It's a really monopoly. Huh? It is a monopoly. Yeah, you know they can afford to buy the biggest and best artists. And I think right now because it's such even... a 
not as big as in the industry like it's still emerging as like the festival music festival industry like they've taken it and then it just like really affects like the smaller shit but i mean like that's business you know and it's just like that's weird and fucked up yeah like politics like that like that's what i'm saying like i don't like it Uh uh-huh but i'm also like wanting to change that kind of thing like fuck fuck them you know figure out a way because like you know who space yard is yeah. So Space Yard is like another event production company, and they've kind of started like this marketing approach of putting quotation marks. Because um, you can't, like, instead of naming an artist and saying, like, oh, hey, like, uh, Snoop Dogg is going to play. Snoop Dogg, they'll say, oh, uh, fucking uh, from the dog pound, uh, question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark is going to play. <laughs> Because then you're not saying that like they're technically playing they're technically, not, right? Yeah. So it's like they found a way how to get around that. So it's just like that shit's tight. It's you know what I mean? The creativity. Yeah. yeah. The ingenuity uh-huh. to work around those things. Yeah. Yeah, there's some things you can't work around. They're like fucking having a lot of money. Going against, up, up against a lot of people with a lot of money, yeah. Fuck. I mean, I guess at the end of the day, that would inspire you even more to do what you're doing, anyways, which is finding people who are talented, curating that talent, helping them connect with the right people. So, I don't know. Would you consider yourselves like entering a space where you're trying to like disrupt, or would you more describe it as you're feeling a need that's not met? both but i think it's disruptive because um we kind of touched on this a little bit earlier everybody else just does one thing Mm -hmm. why i I don't really get it (laughs) like the fact that you don't really have to like in a sense like limit yourself really um i think is where it causes the most problems for other people because then they're like why can't i do that you know yeah That makes sense. But I think that's also where a lot of, like, the, like, people being unoriginal comes from. So, like, if somebody makes a certain style, the first thing everybody does is start making that style. Why? Because people experimented. They did good with it. It got traction. Oh, hey, I'm going to get some traction, too, and I'm going to make something that's unoriginal because it's going to get me some good plays. But if you do that long term... Obviously, it's not going to work out. If you're always being a copycat, yeah. It's... Fuck. Damn, dude. What do you have on your immediate schedule for this like stuff? Um, we have uh, some stuff going down at the W. Yeah, we have a monthly residency at the W. It's like a rooftop hotel uh-huh. uh, in Hollywood. And we're throwing a show. It's going to be free. So if you want to roll through uh, the Damn. 27th. So, yeah, we just we just got uh, linked up with them. It's Dude, that's pretty it. dope. The pretty hell? dope venue. We're gonna it's a rooftop month. venue? Yeah. It's, Shit. It's the 27th sick. of this month? Yeah. Dude, what, pull up. what am I doing 27th? Pull up. It's going to be, the, it's gonna be a, good, it's a good venue. What day is that? But uh, I think it's a Friday or Saturday. Yeah, it's Friday. But... Uh, we're gonna start throwing events there every third. What day was it? Friday. Yeah, Friday. Every third Friday of the month. Um, got some shows coming up. One in Mexico, a couple in San Diego, and uh, one in LA. Uh, I think in terms of like uh, content production, we're gonna wait till the start of the new year to really figure out how we're gonna schedule that and what type of like stuff we're gonna be putting out who are the main two people by the way i mean who are the main people is it just you two or pretty much yeah pretty much are you guys looking to scale yeah. to help with yeah so these we're gonna we're gonna probably bring on a couple people to just help with like the host uh in terms of to produce more like a separate piece of content mm-hmm. like i think that's one of the goals i have for 2020 to start that second segment so we can have, because we have two radio, like, I guess I'll call them clients, Shack Fu Radio and Dash Radio. Mm-hmm. And I think we're just missing the whole market. Um, 
<clears throat> just because we're not able to really, we don't have enough resources to like really pr put out enough content on that platform, which is like a fucking huge platform. So I think we really gotta like use that more in 2020. But until then, we just gotta figure it out. So yeah, you have anything out of that? It's pretty much touched on everything. So, are you guys looking to move or stay at your spot right now in LA? Uh, we're gonna, we're gonna move. We're gonna yeah. move? It's yeah. like soon? Or yeah, what? Yeah, but at least since this month or this year. But we just got fucking sold. <laughs> we got sold to by this, like, she was hating that, huh? But she was like a fucking. <laughs> like a, some secretary that, like, it was just a nice office. It was like a nice office, and she was like, you know, the view is crazy, it was cool. crazy. And like she, freaking downtown like, LA skyline view. Like, whatever. Not really even a skyline. You're in the skyline. We were like, oh yeah, like let's think about it. She was like, ah, oh, like it's not gonna be around. I was like, yeah, it's not. Gonna be around. It's oh my <laughs> god, dude! You guys got soul shade up like that. On the spot. <laughs> oh well. Where are you guys trying to move to? LA. I, th I think just a smaller spot. What do you probably want? Like, something like no, something not something in a skyscraper. No, definitely not in the skyscrapers anymore. Something that <laughs> you can fucking. You're like an office suite, dude. What the hell? Uh -huh. It's a straight up office suite, dude. <laughs> like freaking J.P. Morgan. Yeah, no, fucking <laughs> executive suite. It's fucked up. I wish you could keep that office. Every time I feel, every time I'm up there, I just feel so cool. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm gonna lie, I'm just like, oh, shit. What floor was it? 33rd top floor top floor 33rd it's probably Dude. like the best piece of real estate I'm ever going to be connected with in my life seeing the view from the 33rd floor it's like high as fuck Dude, some of these buildings go up to like justice. some of these buildings go up to like 100 stories like what the I, I can't even imagine the tallest buildings in LA oh we're, we're up there we're Dude, up it there. looks like you're in the sky <laughs> yeah I think the Empire State I Building has like 80 floors or something. I've actually been to the Empire State Building. In, yeah, me too. I went to the after, top. Yeah, after, I think it just feels the same. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't think you can tell how much of a difference. <laughs> after a certain point. Yeah, it just like high. After a certain... Yeah. Well, freaking the top of the Empire State Building, you can see like all the way down the island. Yeah. To the water and stuff. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> but maybe you probably could from like the what 30 city is this? Also. Is it, I have no idea. It doesn't even look like a real city, York. does it? <laughs> I think it might be New York. Like, that might be Staten. Shit, I, I have also just no lying. clue. To me, that looks like the UK for some reason. Yeah, isn't that London? I thought it was fucking I don't Amsterdam. see... Uh, I don't see... Big Ben. Big Ben, yeah. I have no idea, but it looks like the UK to me for some reason. We have more grids here in the US. We plan cities and shit. Dude, do you guys do you guys enjoy doing your podcast, or do you feel like maybe it is uh, ineffective when you're talking to people that like are focuses music? And the reason why I ask is because I've heard Adam Twenty Two saying that it's like kind of difficult to have good podcasts with people who like are in the rap scene that he's mainly focusing on. Uh, he's like, I don't know if it's because they're artists or if because like they're too chill to. Like almost too chill to hold in a conversation. Me, is it tough to interview people, or or wait, what was? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it tough to interview people, or do you feel like sometimes? But sometimes, like, like, do you guys enjoy? It? Is it what you imagine? I don't think we either of us have like the greatest ability, like interviewer abilities yet. Oh really? You know, I like, saw I saw you guys. No, but I mean, do, do people take like years and years and years to develop how to become a good interviewer? Like it's not just, oh, it's, yeah. like a, it's like a talent, like it's like a, or not a talent, it's like a skill that you can learn. And like sometimes with the, you can probably get away with like not having a good interviewee if you're a good interviewer. But if like the, the person isn't talking and like you don't really know how to like navigate your way in the conversation and get them to talk or like really bring shit out of them, that's when it gets tough. Cause like there's some people mm -hmm. that just won't talk and it's just like yes or no shit. And yeah. It's just like, all right, bitch, get the fuck out of here. Okay? <laughs> yeah, like, what are we doing? Like, what are we doing? <laughs> you know, and it's just like, you would want to be able to be like, hey, all right, well, you know, get them in a good mood so they're able to talk easier, this and that, yada, yada. But it's yeah. just like, uh, post production too. Yeah, sucks, huh? Yeah. Did you, who, 
Which of you know how to like do the, all this shit? Do both of you? Or? No, I don't know. I just fucking do that shit on like, uh, what is it, Adobe? Premiere Pro. Okay, but, um, all right, so when you do that and you upload videos to YouTube, how long is like your longest video? Are you asking about like how long it takes to upload and shit? Your process? I was going to get to that, yeah. Dude, we, we've processed interviews that have taken fucking like 15 hours. <laughs> yeah. I think we damn near quit doing that shit because we, it would just take fucking too long, dude. <laughs> It takes a long time, right? Dude, like to take to get it. Okay, here's it. Well, I can't even, also, I can't like, even use gotta, my laptop. Like, while we yeah, can, we don't have a like, good system for it. First of all, so like we would record from my phone. I would have to transfer it from my. You record on your phone? Yeah, from my phone to the laptop. The laptop would have to export <laughs> it to be able to get it uh, to like fucking Dropbox or some shit. Then he has to download it. Then he has to edit it. Then he has to like recompress it. Then he has to <coughs> upload it. So it's just like we have like five <coughs> steps that we fucking need, and it's mm-hmm. coming from a phone that probably takes a long ass time. The workflow is so much more than I thought it was gonna be, just yeah. to record something. I think I'm the dude, and then you're taking video from an iPhone. You're recording from the microphones attached to a recorder. So then you have to link the video with the audio and make sure they're like you know, nice and stacked up with each other, but then, like, the computer lags because it's a fucking big-ass file, and yeah. it's, like, all choppy. <laughs> and then sometimes it'll get, like, halfway through, and then it just decides it's not going to work, you know? Oh and then you just have to restart oh it. God. Dude, I, I don't even shoot this podcast, like, in high-quality video, like, not even close to anything, that, like, to high-quality. Like, this is, like, YouTube freaking 2006 YouTube. We did 4K, like, two, three interviews, but, dude, those are the ones that took, 18 like... 18 hours, dude, Yeah, like, it, to just get it from my phone to my computer. A four-hour podcast with, like, the audio and everything ends up taking, like, legit 20 hours to upload to YouTube. Not to mention to compress the file to begin with. Yeah, so, like, the turnaround is so slow. I gotta get a better fucking computer, but... I don't know. Is it hard? I figure out like what the process is to like get everything transferred quicker. I asked like an IT like one of some IT guy like I work with, and he just said like you're fucked. Like, you yeah, just, you just need a supercomputer. That's it. <laughs> yeah, but it's just like even if you got a supercomputer, it's still gonna take like thirty minutes. And like, yeah, but thirty minutes is thirty now? minutes. Like, why can't it just be now? <laughs> hours and hours. Why can't just go from there to there now? Like. <laughs> dude, it changes it to like binary, like ones and zeros going for every piece of time. Come on, dude. <laughs> Instantaneous. Come on, someone's got to figure that out already. <laughs> My needs are more important than fucking March 2020. Freaking, uh, is it hard for you guys to like link up with people and get them nailed in for a podcast? And like at the right time and like when it's... <laughs> Was that re- is that a logistical nightmare or not really? Or are people really receptive to be like open and wanting to go on the show? You definitely no no, no. with DJs you have to be after them. Just for I don't think stuff. it's been too bad though. Do you think? So like no, what, do you, what do you bad, do? But, like, yeah, I don't do think you maybe, like like someone said like oh we're rolling through uh, it's probably happened like once or twice where they said we're we're rolling through and then like they either take two uh, two an hour two hours to get there or, like they just won't come. I don't think they've never not come. Do you hit people up to ask them to be on the show or like? Yeah, you get both. And I is it people you've already established any kind of reputation with? Or um, it, it goes mix, back yeah. to like curating. So like we'll put we'll or we'll give somebody an interview if we think like they're good. Yeah, it's like handpicked. I well, mean, do you like, think your platform is big enough where it's like you're doing them giving them more value oh, than they're giving sure. you? Yeah. For the most part. For sure. There's some artists that are like... Based on what metric? Just like the following they have? Or what? Like our very first interview? Yeah, I guess I'm just That's probably like our biggest one. interview, honestly. It, you're, we're, really our, Sorry. our first interview? Oh, uh, okay. Um, Dude, I just think our, also our interviews were better before because like we could smoke weed, we could drink, we could have like fucking 10 people at the spot. Like, Wait, why can't you? We could have people getting fucked Because we have a corporate, like a corporate office, office dude. Right now. Like, in the oh. fucking, like, we got lawyers and like fucking <laughs> like accountants and shit. Set the alarm off. On our block or on our building. And like, whereas before we were in Chinatown with like all the fucking Asians throwing like 
fucking leftover pig feet from the dumpsters and shit. It just smelled a little bad, but like before we could just do whatever the fuck we want in there. Like yeah. anything, like anything we wanted. China anything town. went like during the interviews and like now it just feels it has a different feel oh to it. God. It feels like you gotta follow rules. For like, sure, yeah. You can't even hit your fucking jewel in there, like Whereas oh before, God. like, I feel like shit was popping. Like, people we didn't really care. It was like a very... Did you know dudes at the top floor are doing, like, coke and shit? No, no. We're at the the top list of, to- of top floor. Oh, really? But, yeah, there probably is people oh, doing damn. coke on that floor. Oh, for sure, yeah. But I bet you prostitutes go up and down the elevator like crazy. All right, I don't no, know. I don't know about no, that one. No. We have, like, a lobby and shit. Like, a check it, it, I thought there was anything wrong with that. I'm just saying, like... <laughs> no, I, no, but, like... <laughs> Yeah, no, I don't think I don't think it's that popping. Oh no, it's like a hospital building too. So. Yeah, uh, it's the hospital. Like the f- the first thirteen floors of the hospital, yeah. then like the another f- the rest of the floors. I thought it was like Goldman Sachs, like Wolf of Wall Street or some shit. Like that floor, that floor is, the floor itself is like uh, super high high end because it's, it's the top floor. Like KTLA uses uses like the top of that <laughs> building to like, like the helicopters. Like, yeah. Oh yeah. Bro, I see helicopters all the time, like below us. <laughs> yeah, they, 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 they'll, they'll, dude, the they'll be guns. fucking. They'll be just be like, they'll be flying by and shit, and they're loud. The like the military <laughs> ones, like you'll see them, you'll be like, yo, what the fuck? What's my the shit black shaking? Hug. Yeah, and you see like a bunch of fucking traffic. You see some weird shit from the top, like you see some uh, some really nice rooftop pools. Um, Staples. Yeah, Center. you see the fucking mess. And shithole like of LA traffic building up from like two o'clock to like six o'clock. Piling on. Yeah, it's it's pretty crazy. Damn, so you're gonna miss it? Hell yeah, I'm gonna miss it. You gonna miss it? Hector's barely even there. Hector's probably been there probably like ten times. Really? The new office? Nah, I definitely miss Chinatown, dude. I miss Chinatown, dude. I wish we could get Chinatown back. Like the office is sick. I don't think we under. I don't think we. We saw, we knew what we had when we first had it. And now, dude, how do people like, just get away with it, whatever the fuck in like Chinatown? Well, I mean, like, you can get away with anything. Dude, that building <laughs> that we were in like was about to get destroyed. So like, we literally were knocking shit down, making holes in walls, like fucking. Dude, it was like building codes and shit, dude. No, dude, they don't. Now follow they're building tearing codes it down, there. dude. They don't. Fo- they don't follow building codes. I know. How do they get away with that shit? Bro, also, yeah, also, like, right. does a better business bureau ever go and like? Do any kind of freaking yeah, have- accreditation to these business people? Yeah, in China. We, we, like it's we, well known they sell illegal fireworks, illegal oh, animals. Honestly, oh, we could have. That's, 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 that's when you get like in the markets and shit because there's a, there was remember that strip, dude. What strip? Okay, remember like a little bit before where they had that like that fucking strip where it's like the real Chinatown. Not really, no. Oh, all right, dude. Well, okay, there's just, like this little strip. Like this little like it's not even an alley because it's like way too big to be an alley, but it's mm. like a bunch of little shops and shit. Oh, oh, oh like yeah. that's where the shit goes down. But now that I think about it, we could have known anything in that little spot. We could have, dude. I I miss it. We should almost look back at that. We should look back. We could have got him with the yakuza. Yeah. Well, not they're not it's Chinese, Japanese, but whatever. <laughs> whatever the Chinese people are. There's little Tokyo though. What, That'd do, be a what cool do they, spot. Do the Chinese have any gangs you can join? Dude, I'm sure Chinese. they have a ton of gangs. Chinese gangs? Yeah, dude, just like watch any Bruce Lee movie. He's finding a whole gang of people, dude. Every time. They probably like rhythm, too. Oh, wait. Bruce oh, Japanese. for sure. Did you see the Arctic point blank? The they? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Did you see the fucking Ula style thing? Which one? The automation release? That was in Japanese or like whatever, some characters. Yeah, well, it was like samurai themed or whatever. Like anime style? <laughs> There's a lot of anime, sh- anime shit. So thing. much anime yeah. stuff, yeah. Like what? Like where? Like people just use it like in their art form, like in their art covers and uh, their branding. Do you know new jabs? No. no way. You really don't? What? New what? New jabs. I don't know if I'm saying it right, to be honest. N-U-J-A-B-E-S. Mm-hmm. What is it, a show? Siba June. What? That's like, did you ever watch, it's a, they're, it's an artist. It's an artist. It's like. What kind of art? Damn. You know what? I don't know how to, like, music. I don't oh. know what genre to, like, put it in, though. 
like jazz, weird shit. like retro jazz. But like, also, have you ever you ever watched like what was the show? The uh, Samurai Champloo. What? What the fuck, dude? Oh man, there's so many crossovers between like anime and hip hop. I thought for sure as someone who likes hip hop, you would have like been privy to this. Mm-mm. What the hell? What is it? It's okay. Samurai Champloo is like an anime. Uh uh-uh. uh. But a lot of I, the I, style in it was uh-huh. like hip hop. Oh really? Influenced. Yeah, new jazz is like hip hop jazz kind of music. Yeah, no, I don't know. I never really got into the anime stuff. So. Fuck. Until like now. <coughs> Why are we watching now? No, I actually only watched probably like one anime. And it was like a car one. A car one? Yeah. Oh. Jam was telling me about a car anime he watches. Yeah, it's probably the same one. Fucking Initial D. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That shit's hard. It's like a drift one. Damn. Drift anime? It's like based around drifting, really. It's pretty sick, basically. The way he described it, I think it sounded really cool. Yeah. I used to watch like Hot Wheels when I was a kid. Yeah, his like car, the car he has is like one of the, the base. It's I'm based still... off the car he has. Fuck, dude, I miss soccer. God damn it. Huh? I miss soccer. Or I miss, like, the people, like, hanging out with the people and stuff in soccer. Now you mentioned JM. (laughs) Fucking soccer. Dude, you know, I told Strat, I asked Strat, I pleaded with him, please kick Adam off this team. Multiple, multiple times. Bro, no, he no. The damn team. You guys guys have, you guys just fucking sucked, dude. No, no, this was, uh, this was a fucking... You never got kicked off the team, did you? Like, twice. What do you mean? <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah, it was what? It was your fault. He's fucking... No, 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 no. No, I was going to say, any time that I told him, he would say no. But then you ended up getting kicked off anyways later in the season. Yeah, I think it was like before senior year. I was like... <laughs> that was <whack>. <laughs> <laughs> What is it, the principal now? Yeah, he's watching this fucking... Oh my god, dude. You're the only person I know that would say that. No, for real. What the fuck? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. He's, he's cool. He's a nice guy. I don't agree with the soccer tactics, so that's like a different a different story. Oh my god. Do you miss that, Hector? Uh, Is that nostalgic for you at all? Yeah, you know who hit me up the other day? Freaking Nick Barena. Oh yeah, to play no. indoor, and I was like, oh, yeah, hit me up too. I wanted to play, but I like, miss it. Yeah, <laughs> I miss playing it though. It was fun. Hell no, I admit it. I don't miss that shit at all. I honestly, I mean, I still only miss like the same reason I was like there. I think from the start, which was just like being with the homies. Like, yeah. it wasn't really about the fucking soccer, cause like. I mean, fuck, what were we going to do? Fuck it, win the championship? Like, you know, like, I, I, I think after after a certain point, I think, like, I realized, like, all right, one, I'm never going to be, like, a professional. Uh-huh. So there's no reason for me to continue, like, really putting effort into something that's not going to matter. And then, two, this fucking team is not good enough to fucking win a championship. I'm sorry to say so. We weren't that fucking great. I said, sure it, I said it back then, I'll say it now. Like, I got kicked off for that same shit. But, like, I don't know. I think, like, I was just trying to kick it with the homies. And, like, the fact that we were just doing something that was, like, fun was, like, that's what I still, that's what I miss now. But, like, yeah. not enough to fucking go out there and be running and shit for it. <laughs> like, nah, fuck like, that. That's like, what I'm saying. That. Like, I miss I'm playing like, the I'm sport. I'm not to be out there running and shit just to, like, have some homies, like... <laughs> You know, like, we could have just hung out. Like, they're just, come on, they're just, gonna, they're just gonna kick it. Like, you know? just fucking kick it. Oh my god, dude. No, but like, I do miss playing a sport. But I'm, I've been trying to get it back into basketball. Oh, for real? Yeah. Like, what? You playing indoor or like not indoor, but like at a gym or something? I've just been shooting around recently, but I'm, I'm gonna start playing at 24. Like, do you know people who play? Or are you just gonna fucking do nah, it? No, just the court. There's always people playing at the courts. Damn. Right on. And then, heck, you're just, like, lifting weights now and stuff, right? Weight-related. Do you have, like, aspirations as someone who lifts weights? Because, like, you're pretty fucking strong right now. <laughs> um, 
there's like a psychological thing to like deadlift 500 mm. um just because i got like really close one time and then i kind of like stopped That's doing what i was doing a ton of weight. Jesus. and then i'm like getting back into it so you don't have any like you don't want to compete no, nah, I, I don't like you the... Know, is. So, like... Do you remember that guy? <laughs> Fucking, was it like... <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> Do it. I don't know. It's it like so this? good. It's not it bad, dude. So not good. bad. Um, nah, so, like, I went to LA Fitness for a little bit. Because uh, I was... I, 24 was my first gym. And then I went to LA Fit, the new one, uh, in the Eastland Center. And then I went back to 24 because I hated LA. And, dude, all the freaking, like freaking show people go to LA fitness and i freaking hated it dude because it's like oh my god it's like a social thing i'm like oh my god like you find it you find it for you to be like a personal thing like you don't need anybody fucking you exactly. need to chopping it up with people and like well like it becomes more like uh let's see like so like if you're if you're a bodybuilder and then you do a show then it becomes less so about what you've done and more about what the like how you get judged on the stage right yeah that's cool but then like there's also a lot of like conflict because of that so like there's um like in in real like bodybuilding shows like the olympia and like i think there was just like one in vegas this weekend i forgot which one it was exactly but Uh um there was like a conflict about like who won (coughs) like because what the guy was famous or like yeah stuff like that so it's like eh, i just i just rather not but they have like competitions for like weightlifting don't they or like powerlifting is that yeah is that considered like a different kind of thing so powerlifting is like literally like uh, you have like uh, like a weight class and then it's like okay who can deadlift the most but mm-hmm. dude at freaking one of the 24 gyms like there's almost like a freaking subculture for that now and that one's like that's even more annoying fun, but you got like that's like wait game. what do you mean <laughs> oh because like it's like dude like you literally go and do some deadlifts and then the fucking power lifters go do Pull the deadlifts and then that's all they do. And then you're over here and you go do the same shit in a quarter of the time that they spent a whole hour at the gym doing because the rest of the time they're out there fucking just hanging out, you know? <laughs> With their whole and bag then, oh, and shit. I'm a shit. fucking power lifter, yeah. I'm like wearing they're... your fucking knee wraps and shit. <laughs> yeah, that's like all to the extreme. Yeah, like come on, dude. Taking the whole gym. <laughs> fucking just yelling. Like the, there's chalk a, everywhere. It's like there's a certain yes. there's a certain like one rep belt. Like they have to redo the belt every time. <sighs> like yeah, okay. If you deadlift 500 pounds, like okay, cool. But like, you don't gotta be uh, all extras with it, dude. Like I just feel like that's the problem with people. If with freaking everything, with everything, they just get extra about it, you know. <laughs> so I guess I guess there isn't really anything you can do about it about that. <laughs> Like, can't even go to Chick Fil A like, now without protesters be, and shit. Yeah, oh. and that's just like one of those things you can't be really fucking like, because if you would want to compete, it's something you would really probably have to like dedicate your shit to, to like your shit to. Because yeah. there's probably like motherfuckers doing like double your weight probably right now. <laughs> what do you mean, dude? Adam's okay. so quick to throw the towel and everything. <laughs> no, okay. If you were to compete, how like how, what do you think like someone your weight class is is is. At, at like a competition level is putting up do you think and, I was giving him too much credit is that you're saying no 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 I just don't I, that's a serious question because I don't lift? know how much really 500 a 500 pound deadlift I actually really don't is. it sounds heavy I don't, I don't know I don't know yeah. that I mean it doesn't sound like it doesn't I don't know it I'm at a sound. disadvantage because I'm tall yeah so like oh you have to be super big huh yeah um you have to get it up a long way yeah Cause I, I mean, I weigh like one eighty, one ninety. Yeah. So it's like if you have a dude that's like five five, five six, and he weighs one ninety, <laughs> that guy can probably squat like seven hundred pounds. Yeah. And he only has to go like a short distance too. Yeah, so yeah. So fucked. Yeah. So. But like. That, yeah, that's yeah, what I'm saying though. I don't, I don't, I don't really, I don't really care about that. But yeah, I would, I would be down to deadlift 500 really just because I think it's sick. Like... Fuck yeah, I deadlifted 500. What do you got right now? Like the most I've ever put on a bar and lifted off the ground was 10 pounds off from each side. So four plates. Actually, just kidding. 15 pounds off. No, no. 25 pounds off total because I did 
four plates and a 35 and 500 pounds is five plates and two and a halves fuck two four plates you've never almost snapped your shit up doing deadlifts like i that? snapped my shit Six twice four, doing squats what kind of squats back squats like with the bar on your back yeah front squats are supposed to be like far superior right uh, they're harder. They're more so for your quads, and they engage your core more. Like I heard, it's like the weight's not on your spine or something. Oh yeah, it feels completely different. Um, I never do front squats. But yeah, I heard my I hurts better. I fuck my shit up twice doing back squats because oh, I just had bad form. So what do you mean exactly? To like fuck your shit up? Like, uh, like my cousin was saying the other day he was doing squats in the Smith machine, and he thought it like latched on, but it didn't. <laughs> First of all, you shouldn't be doing squats in the Smith machine. That's what I told him. <laughs> I was like, that's what you get, right? Because it's not a natural line of motion. So. <laughs> I was like, um, you said it like bent him like dude, fucking. Dude, honestly, I don't really know what happened. Style. <laughs> Just like back. He said, he said, he said, he goes to apply. So fucking embarrassing. He goes to apply fitness. And he was saying that the fucking alarm went off. Oh my God. Because it's so loud. <laughs> You probably yelled to so it. Like, ah! <laughs> you're like a high pitch. Ah! <laughs> ah. Scared. He said the alarm went off. Ah, oh, like they have an alarm in there. Like, have you seen the commercials where it's like the hunk alarm or something? Yeah. Where someone's yeah, yeah, like yeah. fucking or some shit like that, right? Where someone's they like kick him out. <laughs> no, the people came over and were like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> He's like, "Yo, my bad." He's like, "Snap!" I died. Snap to the fuck. Dude, I was working out with freaking Abel, and I dropped like three fifteen on my head. What? You couldn't pick it up. No, no, wait, no. wait, wait! What do you mean you dropped on your head? So, uh, three. So I, I dropped it. So Abel and I were working out. We were hitting legs, and uh, I wasn't like, or no, I was feeling good for whatever reason. I was like, fuck it, I'm just gonna do it. I didn't have a spot, um, and I just went into it. I did like one. Did another one and I was like, nah, it's not gonna, it's not gonna come up. So I, I, oh, you fucking, I knew I had to bail. And <laughs> usually you're supposed to bail backwards, but like I just couldn't do it or I felt like I couldn't do it like when I was at the bottom. And so I went forward and so it turned into a, a shoulder press <laughs> oh, and then just like bailing because there, there are safety oh. bars. <laughs> and then boom, it just hits me in the back of the head. And I think I was concussed for a little bit. Screen knocked out. That could have knocked you out. Oh, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Some of those shits are funny. Uh, fuck. I don't think I ever. I don't, oh, dude, you freaking a box jump, remember? <laughs> okay, dude. Yeah, when Kyle Too grabbed long. me in midair, I still have the scar. <laughs> dude, that was so funny. <laughs> it was like so senseless. <laughs> he could have only got hurt from that. Like, there's. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I ever got. Dude, I'm ne- I will play. literally never do a box jump again. Like I just won't. <laughs> Dude, box I, jump for oh, I sliced my finger at the gym. It was so weird. <clears throat> you know, like the the freaking god damn, I don't even know what you call it. Those big ass machines that have like the lap pull downs and the rows and everything, and they also have like the you sides can, yeah. where people put like a handle onto it and fucking what are those called? Cables, the cables, yeah, the freaking one of the cable things. I just grabbed, you know, that had the carabiner to like hook on to like the whatever thing you're gonna use. I grabbed it with my hand and I was like doing one-handed like tricep extensions, and like I felt this like warm liquid like on my hands. I'm like, what the fuck? And I look, and my finger was like sliced. Like, from, from what? Here to there. I have no idea. So I was saying the weirdest thing ever. But there was like blood all over the freaking thing. And I had like get that checked out. go to the front and be like, yo, can I get a band aid? Like, Damn. yeah, it's probably sketchy, but yeah, I just had a big slice. I think the carabiner, like, I'm always scared of like getting some fucking like some like straight, some shit on my hand from like sweat at the gym. Dude, there was a girl that died like two years ago from like a freaking flesh eating parasite she got at the gym. Uh, where? Dude, it was like SoCal. Like torrents or something. Some tree fucking mercy or something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like staph infection or something. That's pretty yeah. sketchy. 
Yeah, because you can just get that shit from like anything, right? Yeah, she got it from the gym and the news thing that I read. But yeah, you, I mean, germs everywhere. That sucks to get taken out by the gym. By the gym? <laughs> Dude, Stefan Johnson. Remember that guy? Is the running back? Is the one who dropped the shit on his neck? Yeah. Yeah. The USC player? That would be, that would suck. His family sued the school for like thousands of dollars. They said it was negligence from the training staff, from the trainers. For real? Hell yeah. Well, was he not well, like using a spot or? The story that I heard from like the beginning was always that he wasn't like holding the bar right. Like he was doing like a death grip or whatever uh, where you don't Suicide grip? Yeah. yeah, suicide grip. Um, <laughs> but then when I looked it up God. like online, there were like news articles that were saying like he accused the trainer of like literally bumping into the fucking oh, like geez. the weights or like handing it to him when he wasn't ready to grab it. Honestly, Slim I believe that more him. than the suicide grip because if you drop it with suicide grip, nobody benches with the bar over their neck. If you go to the chest, right? It'd bounce off his chest, it fucking collapse his fucking rib cage, but it's not gonna yeah. be on his neck, you know? Yeah, but like. When someone's handing you weight, that's more of a realistic position of it being over your neck because they have to go like behind you and up. Yeah. So, like, that would explore more sense, right? Yeah, if the guy dropped it early or something. Oh, if he maybe just fucking threw it at him or some shit. Snapped him down. (laughs) Held him down. No, it crushed crushed his like voice box or or something. I don't know. That's fucked. No, yeah, I fucked this shit up. How did, how, when you said you fucked your, you went to Snap City or whatever, like. It wasn't that bad, dude. It wasn't that bad. a back injury is always going to be like scary. Was it like instantaneous? Like, oh fuck. One of them, um, the first one was a scary one because I was doing a squat and on the way up, my back popped. Oh my god! But dude. like, I somehow was able to like <laughs> Jesus get it back up, and then I, I, I that was the one time we get what up the weight because it was a squat. Oh, your back snapped when you squatted all the way down. This is during your I went. Up. I went down. I was on the way up. It popped. I had to finish the squat because I had the weight on my back. Oh, okay. But that was the one time that like I I I finished the rep and I like racked it and I was like, dude, I gotta go home. <laughs> like, <laughs> I can't. I, I have to go home. Like it was my first workout and I I just had to go home, dude. Like I couldn't do it. Was, it. Like, straight up. Yeah. Oh my god. So yeah, uh, practice good form. Oh my god. <laughs> or don't do it. Fuck. Yeah, I don't even mess with I don't even mess with deadlifts. They're just fun, dude. I think I like deadlifts with Kyle once, like senior year. And then like my back was fucked up for like the last five years. Yeah, I mean you're gonna <laughs> you're gonna get sore, but it's a... <laughs> There's probably a false false correlation. It's an but... ultimate workout. Is it really? It's one of the Big three. Oh, I guess you're even holding the freaking bar. Squat. Sorry, with your hands. Well, a squat, a bench, and a deadlift, they're like, you use your whole body, honestly. Makes sense. In, Makes in sense. some way, yeah. Dude, <clears throat> are you working right now? Where are you working? Uh, work for an engineering like contracting company, software uh. systems. Uh, and like one of our main clients or, or basically our two main clients are like the city of LA and Raytheon like JPL oh, okay. so we just hire their engineers and stuff so I work like um, just meeting up with uh, like their people and then sending them fi- their candidates Did, uh, were you, have you been continuously working there or yeah I worked there for like three years oh shit really yeah damn it's pretty cool. Like you get to fucking go to some NASA events. Like that's like, fucking crazy. Like some smart people. It's pretty cool. It's whatever. Shit. Do you have work tomorrow? Uh huh. What time? Um, tomorrow I'm probably just gonna work from home. So fucking probably like nine thirty. So what about you, man? I have a client at ten a.m. <clears throat> Which in? Twenty four Glendora. Glendora. Where is that one? You know where the AMC is? Yeah. In Glendora? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's literally right next to it. 
like by the Sam's Club and stuff. <clears throat> in the area. Yeah. Where did you ever work? Yeah. Where are you working at? San Bernardino. With an environmental consulting? Yeah. I'll <coughs> probably be there by 10 or so. Oh, that's not bad. No. But yeah, it's kind of funny because like if I have just like a random person in here to do it, like a podcast, I kind of want to have an idea of like a time limit or like at least be conscious of their time and stuff. Uh-huh. But like when it's just my friends, I just like talk, I just yeah. keep talking. So uh, what are we at right now? Three hours, 15 minutes. Fuck. That's so long. How long uh, does it usually take you to, to get all this shit like compressed? If I did it without wasting any time, I could do it. In probably two days. <clears throat> but, or if I didn't have to go to work and stuff and I could come and like restart it and like do the night, like, cause then I have to wait until I could start it at night and then it's not done until I come home from work, even though it might be done by lunchtime and then I'd probably do like a day and a half or a day. But, but yeah, man. Uh, where do you want people to look at your guys' stuff if they're interested? Where is best? Like Instagram? That's probably your main spot, huh? Instagram and maybe SoundCloud. What are the handles of the two things? They're both at the Written Project and at the House Project. House is spelled H A U 5. Did you guys have another page too? Mm, no. Nah. House Project? Uh, the Written Project started off it's as something else. Um, but yeah, not since then. Oh wait, I see. Um, oh, fucking future base project. Oh, um, yeah. So like that was just kind of like an experiment. That wasn't like myself or Adam. Um, to be completely honest with you, I don't really know where that's at. But um, it's not like part of what we're doing. For oh most- fuck. <clears throat> for multiple I thought, reasons I was confused too Cause like I thought like I've seen the rhythm one And the house one But like I never seen the logo For the other one But I was like Same Like look Yeah yeah So that's just like Another subgenre of VDM But um, Okay One of uh, One of our friends Was running it um, Like I said Just kind of As an, an experiment mm-hmm. um, But I mean in, Last time I checked the page It wasn't really consistent <laughs> so you're saying um and, sense. and so like for that and other reasons you know like okay for sure so those the two pages is the house and the rhythm one yeah sick dude do you care if people follow your personal page at all or is that anything you like care about like your own uh, personal like brand or whatever adam cobian on everything is it really come on do your handles straight up your name everything man, on everything adam cobian yeah <laughs> He's yeah. looking like Fat Joe right now. Like, come on. <laughs> come on, son. <laughs> no, nah, but for real. Um, yeah, I just got I, I always, like, that's... I've that's always had everything congruent. And, like, I don't know. I've With never, foresight? I've never... Uh, no, just because, like, I've never been good at, like, picking a username or, like... Oh, trying to a be fucking handle creative where, like, about it. You know, you have to fucking... Like, my fucking... Uh, Gamer tag for Xbox is a fucking default one. It's fucking winging mouse and that 812 because like... Is it really? Yeah, because like fucking I don't know what the fuck to put. Yeah, I have so freaking alter like, ego. Yeah, I've never really like got that going. So I've always just been like, fuck it, Adam Kobe. Yeah. I wish I... I yeah, mine, I everything would be just Daniel C. Yeah, but both of yours are pretty like... Pretty common name. Yeah. But yeah, what about you, fucking Hector? Fucking Hector. Bitch ass boy. <laughs> Do you want to plug your... My your handle team? right now is H-E-K and then Hernandez. What do people... Where, are you active on like any social media specifically? Or? Uh, Instagram, if anything. Um, I don't really use Snapchat anymore. So yes, yeah, Instagram. Got it. All right, man. That sounds good. I appreciate you guys coming through and yeah, like just hanging out, dude. Yeah, it was fun. You guys want to come back and just chill? Yeah, for sure. We, we'll, or if you have something to plug, we'll do something. We'll get fucked up or something. On it. <laughs> yeah, probably not on a Sunday, I guess. But yeah, no. We'll do <laughs> Next time we'll do it at a more ideal time, I guess. Sure. But yeah, I appreciate it, guys. And thanks.